because all cops are bastards. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll say, say that. that. Yeah. Um, so. We don't need to say a cab to advocate for police reform. And two, they're unnecessarily divisive. They pit one Democrat against another Democrat for no reason when we have a unified enemy to fight against. And three, they galvanize the opposition because Republicans hear you screaming things like we need to abolish the police. And then four, they depress local turnout because now your party feels like they're not necessarily on board with you. So the voters get turned off from your messaging. 68% of Americans support some form of police reform. Like hammer the issues where you guys agree with each other. Like, so if we're all screaming about like body cams or uh, use of force policies, then get the, do the progress there. Don't go to the most radical extreme thing and then turn around and be like oh i can't believe you guys aren't on my side anymore now that i'm talking about literally abolishing the system where every single actor is a bad you think so, i'm too extreme now do you so, never like black people in the first place that's such a woke scold like way to approach things so not everything has to be simply to reach out to the public there are some messages that can be for a movement um but it do? seems that we disagree with that uh what are you accomplishing what, what am i going to accomplish well there there there's there is, um, well, there. You're, what you're talking about, Prime, just getting to know, sure. you're, what you're talking about is virtue signaling. That's literally verbatim what you're talking about. You want a message that sounds good and feels good, even if it's politically ineffective and leads to the material yeah. harm of the people that you purport to protect. That's what it is. It's virtue signaling. But you I mean, like, you that redneck like, militia should mow down processors. Oh, okay. Uh, what was, what's the, why wait, is what's this the end of the quote? I think I'm going to revise my position here because you have presented good arguments. Okay. You have the police that itself is existing as it is. And the issue is you have one, the unchecked abuse of power. But then what you do is you have people collectively work together. Like people collectively on a local level can often be more effective for averting crises than it is on a police institutional level. So I get what you're saying in like a very broad sense. But the problem is, is like sometimes we're not going to be able to catch the bank robber when he's a little boy and like tell him that he doesn't need to turn that to a life of crime. Sometimes a bank robber is robbing the bank. Right? About why a person's going to rob a bank in the first place. I get you, dude. I know I'm a socialist. Okay, but that's not how the reality works. Sometimes it happens, and we can't we can't fix the material conditions during the bank robbery. We need to fix the the bank robbery as it happens. But we can often prevent the bank robberies occurring from. The but we can't day. always. We're talking about yes. The let's let, let's <laughs> abolish the police because crime won't exist under socialism. So we should, we should just en enact socialism so crime will never that's happen. Yeah, that worked that worked out real well. That works out real well throughout the twentieth century. Destiny's talking. Shut, Sorry. Sh shut the fuck up. No, I was going to say, it, kind of, it reminds me of like somebody comes into the hospital with a heart attack and the answer is like, well, you know, he needs to die at an exercise. And it's like, yeah, that would have helped. But like, we're past the point of that. Like when somebody's calling 911, it's probably not time for, you know, community service. It's probably time. It's like an emergency that there needs to be an intervention for. But yep. the issue is you're oh, yeah. comparing a person experiencing a heart attack, which we already have mechanisms to deal with compared to like violence it's, it's kind of like a good comparison a person getting like beaten down by somebody who's like 200 pounds right more than them is is not you're not going to help them by having a social worker go in yeah. there and say and say like hey can you stop like i'm pretty sure the cops tried that too okay sure but what like you could do is have people resort to like aggressive behaviors without resorting to violent behaviors Right, right, but sometimes the people don't back down is the thing. And like what I've heard from you essentially is like either a return to like the posse system of the Wild West I, I'm or not like the NRA society I'm just or, like, they're like or, or something so yeah, similar right. that it's effectively indistinguishable and the language that I'm using accurately conveys the point that you're making. All right, yeah, or we're I, like I, in I, NRA I, society where everybody just it. has a gun and so just everybody just shoots everybody else. Like that's that. Those no, are the Chloe, alternatives right. oh. that I'm hearing yeah, from you. There, there are some levels uh, in the argumentation that I, I I need to address and I need to think about. But fundamentally, is if we have a system as it is, as it is failing to like protect people and it's fundamentally hurting people more than it is protecting, then you have to devise is, it. Then you have to abolish that system. Like, well, we have a healthcare system that's probably doing more damage, well, not more damage, but it's a pretty fucked up. We don't need to abolish healthcare. We yeah. just need to reform it and do a universal <laughs> system. <right? laughs> well, you need to abolish the mechanisms that allow for the abuse of healthcare. But we systems. don't. So so we actually don't. We don't we don't need to abolish the very I live in California. We don't need to abolish Medicare. We just need to have the government run Medicare. That's just what need, or sorry we we call it uh sorry was it called uh, saying, medical right? I'm saying medical. abolish the, the financial side of it. So by taking by taking okay. the financial incentive. Okay. Yeah you know, when I got my concealed carry uh permit, um they always uh quote this one uh, instance that happened here in Texas um where a gas station was getting robbed, right? Um, the perpetrator had a shotgun pointed at the guy. The guy, through some Chad means, managed to fucking get the shotgun on the guy. Ended up on the other side of the counter. The perpetrator hopped over the counter, right? So they did a swip swap. Now the now the clerk has the gun pointed at the guy, right? Well, some 
schmuck comes like rolls up to the gas station wanting to buy some booze or something. He sees a guy pointing a shotgun at what he thought was the clerk because the guy was behind the counter. He pulls out his nine and shoots the clerk in the head. Well, that guy's in jail right now for the rest of his life because he didn't know the situation. He's not properly trained like a law enforcement officer should be. You can also look at other examples like where people fuck shit up because they don't actually know what they're supposed to do in a situation. They actually put more people in danger by like trying to Rambo their way through uh, some sort of like really fucking uh, heinous um, interaction, you know? I think I think Wordy's I think Wordy's idea is dog shit for a variety of reasons, but I think yeah. you guys are giving like the worst possible version of it. I don't know I don't know um, I don't know how you like to be addressed, Wordy, but I don't think Wordy is saying yeah, that like it needs to be like okay. I don't think Wordy's saying there needs to be like random fucking mobs of people running around murdering people. It sounds like if we construct like an idealized version of Wordy's system, there might be some like small like neighborhood democratic bodies that have people on standby that are designated to deal. Like maybe you have like a nurse that lives on a block or a mental health professional that has worked in like a, a psych ward or something that has that type of training. And these would be the people that you would have in charge to deal with these types of situations. And then those would be the people responsible. And not like a random like, oh, like Joe down the street said it's his turn. So he's going to go and try to resolve the violent conflict between the 15 people down the block or whatever like it sounds like that's probably a more accurate version of what, what woody wants rather than roaming bands of wild yeah. western mobs trying to clean up the streets yeah the issue like with wild western mobs and such is like because it has leads to an inherent like lack of like central like legalization basically but what happens is we already have like community patrols that very much engage in, like uh we have uh i can like uh, uh, in, in more affluent neighborhoods yeah, we have yeah we have like already neighborhood <laughs> patrols that already and they break up do domestic violence disputes. Yeah, they break up domestic violence disputes. No, 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 no. The banana cops, okay, deal with like low level noise complaints like and like parking tickets. The banana I'm not, cops. I'm not buying that they storm yeah. in somebody's house. Oh, and sorry, say, sorry, hey, banana, sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, okay, like the, the community security drove around in, like yellow cars. So like me and my friends used to call them the banana cops. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So, so I think the like, most important part of. I got this. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so uh, this is where I'm going to side against Wordy, right? So I'm actually in favor of centralized systems because I think they are more easily democratically controlled and they have easier to have oversight on when everything is... The big problem with the, the America and the United States that's even delegated by the Constitution, which I think we need a constitutional amendment for, is it's literally illegal to federalize the police um, because it's up to the states. It's the states' uh, delegated powers to the states to handle policing, which I think is fucking awful um and it goes all the way down to like the county level or whatever it's all like I... everyone does different things every state has different training um every state has different funding um it's just like a mess um it's because nobody's voting though, i think i, I, I think the so even, I, I, like, even though i support organization like the police which <sighs> needs to be incredibly responsive to local needs like yeah. federally for 350 million people would be no, a disastrous idea I mean federally that federally well, did you just say federally does or it did mean that, that like uh there's like you federally standardized and federally regulated doesn't mean that there's like the the the, the national doesn't mean there's like a national, national police, chief police? Who, like every every single thing no i said federalize what do you mean what do you mean yeah. nationalized they're already yeah, like owned is. by the state like they're already nationalized um so like um uh so I, but i also believe in like what wordy's talking about when i talk about like so like 93 percent of police calls are nonviolent, right um police's jobs like police officers are too broad they are not specialized enough. So what I would want, the reason I want it to be more centralized and not to just be like community volunteers is because like, I want people who are doing these things, who are delegating, who have special rights to like, you know, go into people's houses, uh, arrest people, do these certain things, should be extremely specialized. So you would have like the mental health unit, you would have the violent crime unit, right? Which would be the, the cops, right? I mean, um, here's the thing, a lot of police departments already have no, they, no. they don't. So there, 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 is no, there, 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 there is no, there is no, there is no single police department in the entire United States that has like tiny little fucking like, like units. They, they, they're experimenting with some, like one, like uh, Denver and New Orleans have like a when I one alternative for like mental health emergencies, but that's it. They, the cops still are delegated pretty much all duties. They do traffic stops, they do violent disputes, they do murders, they do literally everything. Anything that has to I do mean, with law and order, a cop does it. And a cop I mean, is trained in the United States for like five fucking months. And they're like, okay, do, go do all this stuff. When it's things like violence, right? Um, uh, the 
yeah, the cop is enforcing what the state is telling the cop to enforce. But at the end of the day, the reason for that needing to be enforced is because they're thinking about the person on the other end of that violence. Yeah. Okay. So there's a fundamental issue here is because cops as like, not only in America, but like history shows that institutionalized forces of control, like police have fundamentally don't enforce the laws. They enforce the consequences of being like actively being a citizen. So like, for example, so like what happens is like, Cops here are only here to enforce the law to the extent that it is agreed upon for the state to enforce those laws. It's not the people who get to choose those laws, it's the state. Just be we, we exist in a democracy and to some extent we can like have an enforcement of all but of, like an institutionalized of what our ideas are. But the reality is more often than not, the state gets to choose the laws, they get to choose the implementation of those laws, they get to choose the consequences of breaking those laws. And we as a society do not democratically get to choose a majority of our laws. So I, here's a good example of this. One of the ways, one of the things that people like, like use as like an example of how bad cops are is the crime bill, which was something that was put into law by democratically elected politicians. So like, actually we do. We, the thing is like, it is true that the state should you know, just the state dictates what the cops do. But in America, the, the people dictate the state. Is, even though there's as all the problems are, the, the crime bill was popular at the time. You're, you're talking to a few socialists. They say that it actually doesn't. So, yeah, I, I mean, like it just you're does. Like, we, we... So if if anyone's about to cite Gillens and Page, don't. All right, it's it's not a good Gillen's study. Page. I think something so, something that's really important that like a lot of people don't like the idea of like centralized power. I think that the centralized power is really important. That monopoly on violence is really important because we need one central body that's going to have liability for dealing with these types of issues. I think the big issue is that especially when you've got violent situations coming up, there's always a chance that things are going to turn for the worse. And there has to be some central body that liability falls on. There has to be some way to dole out jurisdiction. Like who can we say is ultimately responsible for how our situation turned out? And I think that even in the steel man version, version of uh, your example, um, Wardy, where you have like a democratically allowed elected council or whatever, like, would these people really want to step up and be in charge of these types of situations if they knew that if they fucked up or if they mishandled things, that they would end up being accountable for these things? I don't know if you'd get the same type of participation. But, but uh, by, by putting oh, it on no, a agreed local 100%. level, by putting it on a local level, you basically have a greater harshness of consequence. Because well, but that's what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, like, I don't know who would step up to do that. Like, let's say, for we instance, that have I have people who step up to do things like that all the time. Well, for police officers, it's because they're paid, right? Because they're not just for police officers, but like we have city council members who come in and like they do these things and they're democratically elected. And because of that, if they're democratically elected and they're on a local level, they have a greater, much more perception of consequences as opposed yeah, but to like- I don't think like a city level. council person is going to be like in a, in a situation where they might having be having to make a call on whether or not they need to kill somebody or who they need to shoot or what's going on. Like, I think that the level of liability that a police officer theoretically faces on a call is going to be way higher than a city council person going to sign a piece of legislation. But That's the reality the, is that liability doesn't exist for cops. But it does. What do you mean? We have privileged immunity. But the privileged immunity isn't a get out of jail free card for everything. Cops are held responsible if they do fucked up things. Sometimes, sometimes they're not. The majority of the cops, no, they lose their job. I have a quick. Sometimes fix. they lose their job. Sometimes, job. sometimes they're charged with, with further crimes. It, it really it depends on on the particular case. But again, oh, like really? like the, there might be an argument for like independent oversight for police officers. I think that's really good. I think having independent boards that do oversight is really good. Um, but the idea that. Yeah, the idea that you would just throw out like the whole institution and assume that other people would step up to do the job just because some people run for city council. Like, I, I think you need that monopoly on violence. We need one central body that we can call and say, like, hey, you need to solve this problem. It might get violent. Like, you're the one in charge. Like, you deal with it. You deal with the repercussions and consequences. Like, it's all on this body. And then also, I don't agree. This is kind of on the same point. I don't agree the idea of saying, like, well, we don't make the laws. The state does. I mean, we live in a representative democracy. The state does make the laws. And oftentimes, well, I don't know if I can say often, but sometimes people do actually directly choose the punishments. I know at the very least in California and in Nebraska, um, like the death penalty was literally up for referendum and people voted um, in favor or against it, depending on um, the state, like Nebraska, for instance, they voted in favor of bringing back the electric chair. Um, I think um, I think in California, they voted in favor of, I think it was repealing the death penalty or it might've been for speeding up executions. I don't remember, but like th sometimes it is up for referendum. Like. Destiny, like to steal my wordy real quick. I don't think when people say no accountability i don't think they're being literal i think when people say cops have no accountability they're they what they actually mean is that relative to what they ought to or what is what would seem reasonable 
uh, like the disparity between that and what is reality is so far that people are like they're, they're not accountable to the public and they're not accountable to the law because they have so much immunity, so much privilege. And when they do fuck up, <laughs> when a regular person fucks up in that same exact way, that regular person is going to get fined, go to jail, uh, be punished legally. But a cop is go goes, oh, you're on suspension for like a week. I, mean, uh, I, have, a fix action. Action. I have a fixed action for all of that. But, but this is why, like, when, when Obama introduced federal oversight for certain police departments, um, those police departments experienced much less police abuse and police shootings than ones that d didn't have the federal accountability. So, like, um, the fact that, like, it, it so dramatically made things better when they just added a little bit of accountability on top shows how unaccountable they currently are, by, by and large. Hopefully Biden, you know, brings that back, but... Yeah, I think I, I, I would make the argument that that inherent power hierarchy is the issue in that in the in itself because the power disparity is just going to come and develop over time. I think a lot of the harm that's done with police is because we have like policies either um, what is it formally or uh, informally, I guess, um, like broken windows policing, where police are like looking out to see, oh, is there something wrong there, and they go and they, they harass people. I think that the institution of the police um, can be transformed. So like, um, I think it was Red Charlotte who was saying, maybe we need more um, specialized departments for mental health or for, for like have specific people trained for violent um, interactions. Have people trained for drug, uh, people who are overdosing, have people trained for all the different things. Um, but I don't think I'm, Maybe in the really long run, you can have a society where you don't need um, armed police at all. But I think currently, especially with how many guns we have in the United States um, and the animosity that we have, but we kind of have a culture where people don't trust the police. Um, and so a lot of that is warranted because police um, have don't have a good um, would be uh, what is it attitudes and interactions with the general public. But I, I just don't think that disarming the police or defunding the police um, without um, addressing um, – because if you defund the police and they don't have enough money to train people, like, then that's, that's not a good situation. Or if you de defund the police and they, they, don't, they skip back on well, body cams, scary. that's not that, good. That should be defunded. Yeah, that's Wrong. not what we mean by a defund. I do have one point, but it's really controversial, so I don't know if I necessarily want to say it. Oh, you know, we don't really want well, you to say it. I do <laughs> think that, I do I do think that we need to educate the populace on um, behaviors that are more advantageous for the individual when dealing with the police, like oh, resisting man. arrest. This is the same thing we're talking always about. A bad when idea. I left. Yeah. <laughs> so no, but we're just, right back I'm sorry to bring it back up. We can no, that's no, fine. I'm sorry to bring it back no, up. No, it's but, fine. Um, fine. Go ahead. But while it is true that the, if even if the police is like the worst person, um, resisting arrest or being defiant, uh, that's more likely to get yourself killed. Like it's a, I don't think like you can sort that out after you've gotten to the the uh, what is it? Well, live streaming, like yes, getting for uh, video evidence is always a good idea. I just don't think that trying to challenge the police in the moment when they have a gun is literally like uh, what we tell people who are getting mugged. Um, don't, don't, uh, like, just give them the wallet. Like, you want to comply and then challenge the, the, the oppression or the wrongness or the violence that they're acting. You don't want to do that in the moment when they have a gun and you don't. Is That's my opinion. Okay, okay. All right. So, uh, I, I said I was going to interact with Clarice afterwards because I didn't get to finish what I was trying to do with them. But this Colin dovetails into that. Okay. I think it's perfect. I think it's perfect that you uh, uh, compared the police to criminals, right? That's that's a good uh, train of thought there. Follow that, all right? Um, because um, you're saying if they're the worst person, what does the worst person mean, right? What level of abuse are you actually being subjected to at that very moment? So, the problem is, like, first of all, I don't, I don't... <laughs> You're not wrong and that uh, people uh, should understand the best ways uh, to deal with the police, right? It's something I said previously, right? That, that we should be teaching our kids, like, here are the best ways to uh, deal with the police. Um, don't mouth off. It's probably not a good idea, right? Um, they'll probably put you in a terrible situation. But that's not the solution, right? That's not the solution, like, whatsoever. Uh, that that's only uh, um, addressing a symptom of a larger cause. The cause being uh, the police using horrific violence against the populace, right? Just because they feel like it, just because, uh, whatever, right? Just because I, feel I don't think literally like anybody believes that. Is there yeah. anyone on this panel? Wait, what I was the name of the guy that brought that? 
I don't think anybody here believes that like just acting calm around the cops fixes literally anything. It's just like you should. No, no, because it's no, better no, for and 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 optimize yeah, your own outcome. Pretty much right? everyone I'm, knows that. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm we're a, not saying be dumb around the police. Yeah, we're just I'm saying there are certain instances so where you can be aggressive against police and instances where you shouldn't be aggressive. I'm what are instances scared. where I'm you just, can be aggressive towards when police? you're when you're in like. Large protest. When they're gonna fucking shoot you for wait, what? Bullshit. That was no, wait, that is no, so no. white. I'm sorry. Oh, so white I think part of the part attack of the police large protest. Part of the problem that just here. encourages them to be more on. violent. Stop. 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 Attacking. I'm saying resisting. So hold There's on. The difference between resisting and attacking. There is a, yes, well, no. exactly this. But this is important. This part is important. What he's trying to say is important. It's like, what exactly do you mean by aggressive? Because aggressive is doing a lot here, right? Is aggressive, um, uh, like uh, punching a police officer back because he punched you, right? Is that what you mean? Or is it that um, you simply uh, uh, said no? To them you simply uh didn't uh give them problems you didn't uh put officer at the end of all your sentences because that can be uh, uh read as we there was the 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 case where someone was charged for bleeding on a cop right um it was as aggressive behavior as, as attacking the police right so um <laughs> So my point is, is that like, the the real problem uh, is actually the police, the, the, the judicial system, and the in uh, in a, in in this culture of behavior that says that I can commit violence against them, right, uh, against the populace, and that it is okay. That that um, my decision um, uh, to put my hands on someone is always uh, backed up by the state, and we see that continuously when we actually do take these people to court for their actions. They, they're getting off again and again. So that's that's mm -hmm. the real issue here, not um, the oh, which we were talking about. It's not it's not an incorrect point. We should be teaching kids how to approach the police, but that's only dealing with the symptom, not the uh, one of the root causes of this. And then I wanted to expand things um, with um, uh, Claris, right? So you talked about like uh, how um, the the A cap, right? All co all cops are bastards. How you felt like that was a sentiment here, and maybe no one actually said it um, uh, before, um, but I'll say it now because all cops are fucking bastards. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll say, say that. that. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's not no, that. Okay. Real, so, real quick, uh, can we can we can I can we just uh, no, let me let me point that out to Red Charlotte that there are multiple people on here saying all cops are bastards. Okay. Okay. But, yeah, before, yeah, okay I'll say yeah, it. But she's not responsible for us. My grandma not, in front of me, like, yeah, they're bastards. Yeah, she's not responsible for our opinions. If she thought that there was no, 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 I know she's way. not, but she said before, like, like there was nobody on, like, it was inconceivable that anybody would have the sentiment that like, on that panel. Forty minutes ago. Like, oh, so it was so long ago, so it doesn't matter, right? As in, like, oh, oh, so had it. Wait, who is? Hold on, she said nobody had. Like, hold on, wait. I just want to clear us. Is it clear us? Yeah, clear. People yeah. that are a cab will never ever fucking admit they are a cab. They are the most spineless fucks I in the world. Did. They'll only we, do it on their own Twitter. On the I know. I'm just telling you. Don't ever say, "Oh, so you are a cab." <laughs> 95% of the fucking lefty dipshit no, we talk to are a cap. They're just going to hide it from you, me, and they'll hide it behind all sorts okay. of okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's fucking bullshit. That Destiny has yeah, fucking fuck off, Destiny. That's bullshit. Also, every single argument... Steven, 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 stop. Every single argument that you hear somebody say for a cap, by the way, replace replace police officer with black hair. One at a time. One at a time. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, stop, stop. I will mute you. Holy shit, everyone shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I will mute you. When I say shut up everyone shuts the fuck up i don't care who you are shut up thank you one at a time and i will direct you fuck all right um red charlotte yeah uh, you can you can go yeah okay steven what up? i love you buddy but like you weren't here so like i'm not a cab like i'm unironically not a cab maybe like emotionally but not like ideologically so like clearest earlier had like said something like 40 fucking minutes ago where like he said like you guys are all like a cab and i all i said was that nobody in this conversation has said a cab so i don't know why you brought that up and then apparently where was like oh i believe that so like and then he's and then prime just said that and he's like look look at all these people who who believe it when like in like temp like temporally like chronologically like when i had said that it's when nobody had yet said that that's Actually, why he's somebody like did that. say like, right. Hands it's up. How many, people here, how many people here are ACAB? Hands up for ACABs. Be proud. Oh, Show yeah. your no, ACAB right here. flag. Right here. Your ACAB color. My name is Price Northington. I am ACAB. Okay, we got four four proud ACABers right here at least. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we just right. admitted we're even. There was yeah. somebody yeah. Who, yeah. Yeah. That, who, who, who said that. Heard. Everyone in check can hold another. I'm not a coward. I'm not ACAB. I may cab maybe emotionally because it feels good to say fuck cops, right? But like ideologically, I don't think like all cops are bastards or whatever. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay. Cab yeah. and so, killer cops deserve the death penalty. I'm eight. No, no, there, no, there, no, there is currently no, eighteen no, fucking no, top no, gangs. I was gonna say I love I love it. Lefties so, yeah, will all come like, out talk about how rehabilitative justice is so important or whatever, and then when a cop goes to jail, it's like <laughs> rape him, rape that motherfucker. So that's really dishonest once again from Destiny. Nice work. Great. Hold on. This is why I love man. Fuck Destiny. He's fucking low tier base. Um, hold on. So okay, I wanted okay. to. Uh, I, I think we everyone, might be no, able to shut have up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Hold on. Don't worry. Shut up. Thanks. Great. Because I didn't actually get to finish my point. Um. So yeah, I see your hand starters. Um. So um. The re why why am I uh a cab right? Why do I think all cops are bastards? I didn't originally think that. Um. But my my thinking has changed. Right. This last year certainly has changed my opinion on that. Um. So when people say that, it's not. Well, excuse me. Let me not speak for all people. Let me just speak for myself, right? So other people might have different opinions on this. But when I say that, when I say all cops are bastards, right? I don't literally mean that every single cop is like a bad guy, right? Is out to get me or my loved ones, right? In fact, then I'm why say it? Oh, well, then let me fucking tell you. I'm They're literally, in the, I'm literally really in the middle really of telling you. This, I'm literally reason. right now in the middle of telling you. Holy shit. Anyway. <laughs> There's nothing you can say following that that's going to justify that. Like, imagine if I were to say, hey, Bab, all you. blacks are bad. Okay. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. I don't mean that's all this. Right. Right. Please shut up. That's right. 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 The, this is the, the the philosophy king here. Great. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so uh, <laughs> move on if what? you want. It's a stupid fucking slogan. Uh, when you when your slogan is me, all cops are bastards, but when no. I explain that, I don't actually mean all cops no, are no. bastards. It sounds like a really Holy shitty shit. fucking Shut slogan. Shut the fuck up, Destiny. Destiny, give me it's give an me operation favor. in Saint Washington. Everyone, you know what? everyone. I can, I can oh even, my god. Oh my god. It even sounds cooler. Scab. Some cops are bastards. Look at that. It's like such a better such a better saying. No, no, this is great. Because some people actually believe in. Shut up. You shut up. I will mute you the next. Next time you talk when I'm talking. Thank you. Great. I love it. Um, now, back at it. Um, so, let me explain why I say all cops are bastards. And it's a, a proper description. So, bastards can mean lots of fucking things, right? And so, some cops are yeah, out to get you. Some cops are fucking racist. Some cops love to use their power against uh, um, the people who are under them, right? Against the civilians. We've seen that. Uh, the, some of them have uh, rage issues and will beat the living shit out of you, right? But... And those are one type of bastard. Another type of bastard is the cop that's standing next to them. The cop that watches all of this happen, doesn't put her hand on you, right? Um, uh, would never maybe do it themselves, but they'll watch it. They'll watch what's going to happen. Um, we, we've seen this again and again uh, with uh, the, the videos that have been released. Uh, police uh, committing extreme violence, right? Surrounded by other police who are just standing there. The crowd is begging them, do something, stop this. You got to stop this. And they don't. Why? Why? Because this is standard operating procedure. Why, why would I step in? No, this is what we do. We brutalize civilians, right? Well, me, me not, not me. No, I wouldn't do that. But like, yeah, he's just handling business. So no, fuck those cops. Fuck the police unions that protect them. Uh, fuck the justice system a a in general that allows all this to happen. And fucking, uh, uh, fuck our larger uh, political system that simply seems to not care when uh, people, the undesirables of society, are being consistently um, uh, uh, subjected to this level of violence. That's why all cops are bastards because they're participating in this system uh, because they aren't because we don't see cops dismantling when, when we do see cops there are a few a few whistleblowers when they do see cops uh, 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 whistleblowing what happens what happens all the good cops right all the good cops uh, uh, step out and they make them suffer right they harass them they may attack them um, and they won't back them up because that's the thing that'll do that'll happen when they call for backup the whistleblowers uh get none right until they leave uh leave the uh, uh police force so yes again all cops are fucking bastards that's what i mean all right you can respond uh yeah. Yeah. How can you, i just want to know i have one question how can you Let's say go. something so controversial yet so brave at the same time uh, <laughs> steven steven okay so like so like no, can no, I, can no, I, no, you can say you can say that you, you red, the slogan red stop i want clear some real response because i said a lot of stuff to him so red please Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Tears, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think your statement really speaks for itself. I, I think there is definitely an issue where cops will cover for each other. I think that also speaks loudly to um, the, the responsibility that they have to the public. 
um, and and basically how how difficult that job is, um, and and basically they, they have a responsibility to each other as well. So you you definitely have this this feeling of mutual um, need where where they have to back each other up. Even in the most egregious of situations, I, I think that is like when you probably, have your, uh, knee on the neck and so when they're dying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we'll back I, up I here, think bastards. I think that is I think that is a product of the way that that the police departments have been set up, and I think that should be reformed. I I do agree with that. Um, it's, uh, and, oops, sorry. I, I, I don't think it's necessarily because of the way that the police departments are, are structurally set up. I think that's part of it. I think part of it is the police unions, but I think part of it is just the nature of the job. Yeah. So, it's so, I, so, it's so okay. So, hold on. so I'm, I'm responding. I'm responding to Prime. So again, okay. it, the things that we talked about, the things specifically um, that um, the, the guy was just talking about, as as I correct, whatever I was talking about, is, as far as any qualified immunity um, and some other things. Um, I, I think those are solutions um, to the problem, but ultimately, I, I think it, it takes um, the community to come around and and agree with your position in order for those reformations to happen. And with a slogan like ACAP, it, it, it's it does nothing for your position. It, it makes your it makes you guys look like a bunch of crazy people who hate the cops no matter what, and and you just want to be able to run around and break into cars and and and. I mean, hey, 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 so black lives are pretty so, hateable. So, so, so black lives matter. That's such a divisive, uh, divisive slogan, right? Like, why not have something? The difference something is better? that black like, lives matter. Doesn't, matter. Doesn't, like, no, black lives matter. In all lives black lives matter. matter. Like, so, like just black lives. Though. Like, that's, no. That's what true. about white people? What about white? Oh, I forgot. This was the internet where we where we ignore what every person actually thinks. Why don't we? Why don't we? Why don't we? White people. Yeah, Why don't hold on? Destiny, hold on. Destiny, Destiny, hold on. Destiny, hold on. Destiny, hold on. I will definitely get to you. Hold on. De Destiny, we will definitely have words. Um, but uh, why don't we have a slogan that makes everyone feel comfortable? No, we don't actually have to have everyone feel comfortable when we're making a protest slogan. That's not the point. You can have to make everyone want. fucking feel comfortable. Oh, no, it's actually to get the sentiment across, right? To rally the troops, right? So there are different Wait, parts of activism. Some of them is reaching out people who don't understand the um. Um, sorry. Uh, people who don't understand uh, uh your message, right? Who, who who don't really get the movement, right? And you have to make efforts to bring them in, right? But not every single message that comes from a movement has to be with the singular goal of bringing in fucking Jim Bob from Kansas, right? Because Jim Bob on the on, on, on other hand, right? Too. The people who don't—that's the yeah. only person you need to you bring in. No, no, it's not. not. It's not. No, it's not. You don't need to no, convince the, the people no. that are the only people no, that ACAP appeals to are fucking radical no, lefties that are already no, in favor of police reformation. Didn't say that. Hold on. Again, once again, Destiny's putting words in my mouth. He loves to do that. Holy crap, shit. All right. Um, <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. All right. So no. The, first of all, once again, we can reach out uh, to others. Like I just said, like reaching out is very important. But not every fucking message needs to uh, be uh, for that point. And here's here's something else that's uh, that's that's really important is that not everyone that that you even do reach out that does hear a message will actually do anything fucking about it. Right. So we can understand mm -hmm. this. We can understand that um, there's levels of participation within the protest. So you can see you can be generally for for something. Right. Like, oh, yeah, I guess that's OK. Right. Um, you can be out there on the streets. You can be uh, writing uh, uh, letters to your fucking senators. You can be doing uh, there's a whole spectrum. Right. And so some some slogans are just to rally the fucking troops. A cab rallies the fucking troops because all cops are fucking bastards. And we got to let them know that. So like you know who what that's the only thing you, that's the only thing you said that I agree with Brian. A cap rallies the troops. The troops that it rallies are the Republicans that hate your shitty fucking slogans yes. and then show up and, and, and vote against you. And, 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 and okay, guess when the fuck those Republicans are going to be fucking say, oh, I'm just talking about okay, yes, stupid fucking sayings like A cap and jerking off fucking socialism are arguably one of the big <laughs> things that cost us a lot when it came to congressional or congressional seats in the in the in the past election. It's one of the biggest things that a lot of Democrats are talking about. Yeah, you can sit there and shake your head all you want. But no. even among, hey, here's a fucking no. fun yeah, fact. Even right. among Republicans, we're trying to get the data for that. Where's the data for that? Destiny, hold on, hold on. One at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Destiny, where's the data for what you're referring to, please? Which, what, what part, what data do you want? Oh, so you said about losing seats. Hold on, hold on, stop. About losing seats. About white people talk at once, please. About losing seats. Okay, what data do you want? Uh, I, the data that backs up the point you just made, like um, which one? Um, the one that ACAP doesn't pull popularly. No, the no, one no. that everybody, yeah, every yes, single that person, it caused us to lose seats. A lot caused us to lose seats. 
You know, well, they're pulling unpopularly and it's losing no, their seats. Is no, 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 no. You, you said you had. You, you said that. You there's said that was the case, right? Hold like, on, shut up! Rebels. Oh fuck! Shut up! Hold on. Uh, when I'm talking, you don't have to talk. No one else needs to be talking when I'm talking. Thank you. Holy fuck! It's I don't know dead. how hard this is. Like seriously, shut the fuck up. Thank you. Um, Destiny, um, you said that we lost six because of ACAB and and and, and socialism, right? Um, so. Can you show data that we lost seats because of ACAB? I'd love to see it. I'd actually love to see it. I'd actually sure. If you're bored, I don't know what his published pieces are, but okay. David Shore is a political scientist that does a lot of analysis for democratic issues. Okay. He has like a 45 minute conversation with Noah Smith on one of his podcasts where he talks about like a lot of the political trends of the country. Mm -hmm. And then you can also find a lot of democratic people that were running for office that complained. There was that call that leaked where they were expressing how irritated they were that they were getting calls from their constituents about how uncomfortable they were with things like ACAB and with things like socialism being pushed so much in the broader kind of like democratic sphere of the party where a lot of people are uncomfortable with it. A lot of brown people from South America do not have favorable views of socialism, regardless of what the very white, very suburban people on Twitter tell you. We're not and a lot of black people socialism. in the United States and a lot of Hispanic people in the United States have favorable views of the police. Believe it or not, they, the police as an institution still polls as one of the most popular institutions in the United States, despite the fact that trouble exists with them. Get, so when you I run out that. there screaming things like abolish the police or like that. socialism is awesome, whatever, these types of political messages are one, unnecessary, mm -hmm. because we don't need to say a cab to advocate for police reform. And two, they're unnecessarily divisive. They pit one Democrat against another Democrat for no fucking reason. Well, we have a unified enemy to fight against. And three, they galvanize the opposition because Republicans hear you screaming things like we need to abolish the police. And then four, they depress local turnout because now your party feels like they're not necessarily on board with you. So the voters get turned off in your messaging. But slogans like ACAB or whatever are dog shit slogans. All they're good for is circle jerking with your friends on fucking Twitter and, and galvanizing the opposition party. That's all they do. Okay, so I'm never, I'm never worried about like the opposition party and what the opposition party will do, right? Like they will always uh stand against everything that i stand for right so like it's, it's like not you're wrong that's not, not a not a thing right so um like if, but you're not was, worried about the fact that also like, like, hispanic, hispanic vote is going further and further and further and further yes. okay yes. Hold on. First of all, uh, like, confidence in the police among black americans is at 30 percent, and among whites it's at 60 that's actually not a high at all. I, I, I don't know what you're citing, and I honestly, God, I wouldn't trust anything that you're uh, citing. From, from the New York something. Times, the, that's, that's the, great. What were you saying? Sure let for. me so, in. Hold on. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Everyone shut the fuck up. You can all wait. Everyone on you can wait. Thanks. Great. I'll let you in when I let you in. Thank you. All right. Um, when, so, point of personal um, privilege. <laughs> <laughs> Can, can, can we have the speakers list? All right, don't worry. I'm going to mute you. So it's cool. I'm, I'm just going to mute you because you've been really fucking annoying me. So I'm just going to mute you. So shut the fuck up. Thanks. Um, all right. Now, moving on. Uh, so um, <sighs> what I was... Uh, well, fuck, I lost my train of thought here. Um, you were saying something uh, terrible. Like what was talking no matter what. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, um, uh, and I mean by that the Republican Party. So um, be very clear, the Republican Party, right? Like now, Republican voters can have a, a litany of thoughts, right? They can have, they can think all kinds of different things. Um, and so, and there are plenty that may be reachable with uh, with the um, with a certain message, right? But I I I I, I, I stay the course in that, like, um, not everything has to be simply to reach out to the public. There are some messages that can be for a movement. Um, but it do? seems that we d disagree with that. Uh, what are you accomplishing? What am I going to accomplish? Well, there, there, there is, there is, um, well, there. You're, what you're talking about, Prime? Just getting you know, sure. you're, What you're talking about is virtue signaling. That's literally verbatim what you're talking about. You want a message that sounds good and feels good, even if it's politically ineffective and leads to the material harm yeah. of the people that you purport to protect. That's what it is. It's virtue signaling. I, I, I want to ask no, Prime no, no, no. Sure. really quick. Is that cool? Yeah, no, yeah. Go okay. Ahead, sure. So, like, you're you're saying that like it rallies the troops, right? But if your your call to action that rallies the troops, even if it's like the rah 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 thing, if it actively makes people more galvanized on the opposition, like doesn't that actively work against what you want? Isn't what you want to be a more unifying thing that tries to get more people to support the cause that you believe in? Like but the I, police are unpopular. Okay, yeah, that's but there are also people that yeah, like yeah. even if the police are unpopular, that doesn't mean that everyone hates them as viscerally as you do. I, right? I, so there's like levels of hate, right? So so in exactly, LA they exactly do this. Like, but there are people here. sorry, but there are LA, people who LA is probably gonna vote are, blue anyway, but we're not talking about LA, are we? We're talking about yeah, like places in fucking Kansas, Jim Brook from Kansas. We're talking about everywhere so, in America. So hold on, you can ask if your question. If you want to rally the troops, well, no, you can, can rally them I'm, all over America, not just can, in LA. You can, sorry. Uh, yes, but I do my You can uh, ask me that question again, Sansal, because I wasn't able to answer. I didn't hear you. Okay. 
Okay, so basically, like you, you said that this is uh, like the A cap thing is to rally the troops, right? And it's not necessarily to get everyone to like come onto your side. You're trying to get your troops rallied, but if your rallying ca- cry actively makes the opposition hate you more and more likely to go okay. out and vote against you, whereas they wouldn't necessarily do that otherwise, should, doesn't that actively work against what you? Black want Lives Matter. Have, have, Red Charlie, I see your hand, but I'm not going to yet. So wait, sorry. Um, um, so. Oh, should Black Lives Matter, I'm going to respond to you with a question. Should Black Lives Matter not been named Black Lives Matter? Because everything that uh, Destiny said about um, uh, ACAP, almost well, almost everything he said about ACAP, um, counted for Black Lives Matter. Should they not have said that statement? Should have been named it something else? Okay, but Black I'll Lives Matter polls better. Hold said. on. Black Lives Matter polls better than ACAP because oh, more people yeah, sure. are no, like, no, 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 like no, 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 but that doesn't matter. That, that doesn't matter. To... That doesn't matter because it, it fulfills everything, right? Um, Republicans hated it, right? And it uh, rallied the, their troops, right? Like, um, it galvanized them, right? Um, But they're galvanized against any fucking They hate it because movement. of the phrase um, or did they hate it because of the movement? No. Uh, well, they, yes. Well, first of all, they hate they, they, they hate they hate the the cops move. They hate the Black Lives Matter move. They hate yeah. They hate all that. But part of it, part of the rhetoric around it, was the fact that it was called Black Lives Matter. And why can't it be All Lives Matter, right? Or and then they came up with Blue Lives Matter and White Lives Matter. Yeah, so it's both, right? It's both of those right, things. And then they saw the police beat the shit out of everyone in the George Floyd protest at the beginning of the summer. And people were like, oh, actually, okay, I kind of get it now. I'm willing to listen now, right? Oh, but then yeah. people kept on fucking, like, hammering home, like, uh, the, like, so, all cops are bad people, like, so uh, our, abolish our, the police. And people are being like, oh, well, so maybe the they GOP, are. Oh, okay. Maybe it is going a little bit so, too far So, so yeah. the GOP was on our side. So he's thinking the Republican Party, like, uh, <laughs> once George never. Floyd um, uh, was murdered, right? And uh, we saw those images uh, flying around the internet. Um, the GOP was on our side. They were marching with Black Lives Matter, right? So we had the Republican Party. We there was something like unified. 80 percent support for or something close to that uh at the beginning of the fucking summer right because people were seeing these like the the fucking video of the cops running over people in new york people saw they're like damn maybe maybe these people have a fucking great, point great the cops are doing fucking horrible shit great. right and, and then, so like it, and this is perfect yeah. this is perfect Sansa. this is perfect I, I love this because right so you have these people this is exactly what i was fucking talking about so you have these people mm-hmm. who like will tell a poster yeah i guess i'm for black lives matter definitely right and then the thing that turns them against them right that, well, the thing that turns them against them are, are people chanting all cops are bastards those are the people who are going to march that, that, that level of commitment right like after seeing that horrific amount of violence right um directed <sighs> At, uh, at protesters, the horrific viol- uh, violence. And the message was not abolish the pol- police, was defund the police. That was the message. But after seeing that horrific amount of violence, they're like, well, you know what? Are um, you an anarchist? They have. No, I'm not a fucking anarchist. Um, okay, uh, so I, like, so you're saying that there is a point like at which you see like, right? state violence. Hold on. There's a point at which you see state violence and you're like, okay, well, maybe we don't have to go that far in like getting rid of uh, of institutions, right? There's a level at did, which I you would say, say that. okay, that's too far. Yeah. Is that. So there's too far for other people, and getting rid of police is I that. Add in this, is that limit and for them, I, and right? again, the the the, the statement, the, sorry, the overriding narrative was uh, defund the police, right? So there are some people, yes, who said abolish the police, but that's another thing. That's completely another matter, right? Um, and it's not something I have to defend. Um, so, but no one, but the, okay, but the then you're bringing it up. I don't, I didn't I under, bring up I know, and I agree with you on you're like bringing up defund abolish the police, the police and defund the police isn't abolish the police. So I don't know right, but a, people, but that's the that's the problem with defund the police is that no, you ask uh two people about what uh defund the police means and you'll get three different answers. Ask two people right? what, defund, uh, what Black Lives Matter means and you'll get different yeah. answers. Like what? Yeah. The public may not be educated on exactly the public is educated. Ask yeah, someone one is, ask them one who the fucking like uh, vice president is. A movement you can that, uh, see, because of a see the polls, situation uh, and then the other the is like a policy. See the polls throughout the years uh, 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 when you ask the public who the fucking vice president is and they don't fucking know that. So the fact that the public doesn't completely fucking understand nuanced um uh uh, uh political slogans and um narratives is not a surprise to me, right? Like that happens all the time. People are checked out. Why they listen. You they walk. They, they, I'm yeah. on, sorry. They 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 just listen to he- headlines, right? No, because you, here's the thing. Again, once again, those people, right? You're saying that at some point there was a high watermark, 
high watermark for BLM, right? Once once those images were, were, were flying across, right? The internet, right? So people were looking at this, they saw the extreme violence, and then after that, the narrative you're giving to me, so this is what I'm getting, so you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? But the narrative you're giving to me is that they heard a slogan, and they're like, ah, uh, no, never mind. I'm not going to uh, support the uh, uh, the fight can for I black lives. It's not that radical, though. Can I explain, though. Though. Can I explain the difference? Hold on, hold on, the difference I'm, 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 is sorry, that... Sorry, 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 like, is that your yeah, narrative? Uh, uh, no, like it's more like um, there's there's like they can agree with the overall like reason why people are upset. But then the the policy prescription that they're getting out of it is like defund the police. Like, what does that mean? Does that mean like make sure like completely take away all of their funding? Does that mean this? Does that mean that? And that makes them be like, well, these people are going too fucking far with it. Obviously, movement, there's a problem. But like that, what they're proposing is during the civil crazy, rights movement right? of, like, uh, of the '60s, like they can just uh, uh, black uh, white people were easily convinced okay. that uh, what MLK wanted, right, is for uh, blacks to take over the country, right? Like that was a narrative, right? Um, but you, but you asked, but yeah. was, it, was it MLK's fault? <laughs> uh, was it MLK's fault that Randall? motherfuckers don't understand uh his uh political movement was that was it his fault she had rethought like to make the uh uh, uh, uh rethought all of his tactics um because of random motherfuckers he had a more unified did he like, yeah did he wait, wait, i believe that why mlk dropped the movement was fractured the entire time there are many people with different ideas uh uh um, yes it was my fault from even mentioning mlk but the movement itself was fractured it had many different messages and some of those messages were more radical than others right that's just how it is sure. that's what that's part of a a, a movement right so people are gonna have different yeah, ideas movements tend and to so be. yeah um but some people uh, thought like oh that's what they must all want they all want uh uh black nationalism maybe uh, they all want to uh uh take uh, the state of fucking washington or something and make it a black colony right so it doesn't matter like yeah the fact that different people don't understand uh, the movement i think does, i don't find it convincing at yeah. all but hold on there are the no, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, gotta, I got some other people there's in. difference in like what you can do like fe- like so when there comes to what they were like protesting like they were protesting for the federal government to grant them civil rights and that's something that the federal government can do whereas like what black lives matter is currently protesting for is not something really that the federal government can even legislate on so i don't know no, like what, what do you think there's what is oh sorry i can't go down the rabbit hole for you right now i'm sorry i got a lot of like, people in um, federal funding so hold on, to just, police hold on. i just i can't i can't go down this okay. rabbit hole right now um uh so we're gonna <laughs> go to uh, red charlotte we're gonna go to uh kobe we're gonna go to uh stardust um and then uh oh uh uh, uh destiny yeah and then yeah we'll go on but all right, so this is where I'm going to like half agree with Steven. All right, so I do right. well, half agree with you, half agree with him. So I do think that messaging is important, right? But, um, and, and I probably do think that like ACAB specifically, um, not abolish the police, but ACAB specifically is necessarily like it, it is like its nature is aggressive and it's inflammatory right you're calling a group of people bastards a group of people that like half the country like uh almost religiously supports right um uh yeah. but, right like i think that like ragging on stuff like abolish the police is a bit too reactionary because like even like to invoke mlk in the civil rights movement mlk was like fucking hated by everybody the march on washington had like 60 percent disapproval with like white people or something um like just because right now it's unpopular doesn't mean uh that you should stop advocating for it because the goal of advocacy is to you know make it more popular right so like for example i advocate for the abolition of the second amendment right i know currently that advocating like oh, I want to abolish the Second Amendment is not politically smart, which is why I don't currently do it, but I'm still seeding it in my advocacy to push for that because currently 21% of Americans want to abolish it, 49% want to alter it, right? So we're we're almost there, right? But like, doesn't mean I should stop talking about it because like, then it will never get more popular, right? Necessarily, this is for anything. Um, so the police even even uh, defund the police, right? So defund the police, police keep is an extre- defund the police is an extremely popular slogan. Um, but the idea behind it is not unpopular. So for that idea, for abolish the police, the idea is unpopular, right? Not the slogan, right? So for abolish the police, uh, for defunding the police, all we need to do is change the slogan and we'll get our message across and more people will support it and we'll be able to you know, defund the police. I think it was like, uh, yeah, here it is. Defund the police has like 28% support, but when you change it to redirect police funding to communities, it becomes like 45% support, right? So like, 
for something like that, yeah, we should change the slogan. But for something like abolish the police, the goal is to make that's the idea behind the slogan. Um, and I probably agree with Destiny that like a cab is you know probably not a good slogan, and that it is not necessarily fun. Okay, so I, let's, I let's, let's but it does feel good to say. Let's so. let's yeah, it does feel good to say. All right, um, so I uh, will go down list because we got a lot of people waiting. So um, I see your your hand up a two board, and yours your is up as well, uh, Titan. Is that your hand? Okay. All right. Um, all right. So uh, let's go to uh, Kobe, Stardust, Destiny, Dr. K, uh, uh, Titan, and Morty. Okay. I have a lot of hit on, so I won't try to go back. Um, I, I put some links into Prime's Twitch chat um, to two articles, one on the Intercept, one on NPR, talking about generically this kind of stuff. i um, just kind of uh, reiterating, I think, the point that multiple people that I brought earlier. It does seem as if these kind of police slogans, police rhetoric did not help a lot of races and contentious places in Democrats. Maybe we can argue that we shouldn't be focusing on those places, but that's a different argument um, specifically. So um, I do think that it is incredibly important to talk about rhetoric. I think rhetoric matters a whole lot more than we like to put on. Um, at the end of the day, I think prime, I think you're legit. I think that it is fair to point out that, that there's kind of, there's like a double standards, I guess, between the type of rhetoric that we employ when it comes to police reform and the kind of rhetoric we'll employ when we're talking about Black Lives Matter. But the truth of the matter is there kind of just is a double standard in rhetoric. Sometimes stuff hits and sometimes stuff doesn't hit, right? Um, to go to um, MLK, there actually was a lot of t discussion of, of, of this talk about like, how much should be play into this white supremacist narrative that black liberation is actually black domination. This was something that's been talked about all over the place, right? Nelson Mandela famously said, I fought against white domination and I fought against black domination. The, putting this into the rhetoric is something that has actually been incredibly successful. It seems as if um, going against the uh, people's fears is important. Now, why is it very important specifically with this, with the discussion of police reform? And the reason is, is that, you know, going into both those articles, there is broad support for some types of police reform. Qualified immunity, people don't like this. Generically, there are many communities that people just agree. The police, they, you know, a lot of people disagree. There's not good uh, relationships. The problem is, is that when you push this, de this defund and or abolish a slash a cab rhetoric you begin to create as we've said we rally the troops not for actual re, uh, uh, restructuring actual reform we rally the troops for people that are more moderate more status quo we actually talked about on this panel a couple like maybe a month ago that when we saw a rise of crime and a lot of you know over the summer and now a lot of people kind of want to see why they want police i i, I think that you know i i think that it's very dangerous uh the kind of the the situation that that, that police reformers are finding ourselves in in which people are kind of like you know, are going to want to have police on top of having the perception of the other side of that they they do not want police at all. So yeah, it's not fair that rhetoric matters. It, it is a double standard. I under I get that, but it just seems to be a double standard that does matter. Um, that's all. Fair enough. All right, uh, let's go to Stardust, Destiny, Dr. K, Titan, Morty. Yeah, um, Black Lives Matter um, hit well, I think partially because there is a history there for people to look at and, and see that um, typically black people have not been given the same type of light when it comes to having injustices committed against them, right? They, they haven't been seen as much, right? Um, whereas like when it comes to all uh, ACAB, um, a lot of people have had n decent to neutral uh, interactions with police and ACAB generally puts a lot of the blame on the cops and not the actual system that that put them where they are right so so that was just like my, my input yeah so i think that's the wrong. slogan itself um, right because um like first of all like black lives hit well no black lives matter is, is a pretty old movie then like like well initially start... it didn't hit well no, yeah right? and, yes, exactly exactly that yes you, you, you beat me to it Initially, yeah, no, but initially, yeah. no, but initially, no, 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 uh, ACAB didn't hit well, and it won't hit so, well. So, but no, that's, that's because a, people on. have like yes. people actually well. have like decent to neutral interactions with cops. Like people rely on cops for a lot of things, and a lot of people. So the so the so sorry. The point of um. Uh, yes, a lot of people have those uh, good interactions, right? Yeah, sure, right? But they also have great interactions with uh, the white patriarchy, uh, with the, uh, 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 the, uh, the power system in general, yes. Um, so why, why, uh, why should they sign up with Black Lives Matter in the, in the be to begin with, right? Like, people don't like, visualize the, the white is, patriarchy the is, as something that's real, the point, the right? Like, is, we know it is, but, like, uh, but the, the point is, like, hold on, uh, the point is, is that, like, with Black Lives Matter, um, sorry, uh, uh, with, with ACAP, God, fuck, my me off um what was i about to say fuck uh fuck me um uh the point is is that uh no nah, I, I completely forgot it fucking forgot it all right whatever <laughs> moving on can um, i just, I can I just like say. take some of my like, blonde hair for a moment no, uh, I, I, am i the only one who thinks that is that controversial so uh like i don't think it's 
I don't think it's that controversial to say all cops are bastards. Like, if I worked for an organization that one of the byproducts of was uh, racially motivated attacks, and then I said uh, working for that organization makes me a bastard, like, that's not that controversial. Like, so, but it is. It is. Maybe it shouldn't be. Maybe in your opinion it shouldn't be, but Pew Research disagrees with you. I forgot. I wanted to add one quick thing. I'm super sorry for filibustering. One thing the difference is is that Black Lives Matter is not a policy prescription. It's not saying reparations now, right? Uh, ACAB and defund the, or sorry, not ACAB, but defund the police and abolish the police, those are policy prescriptions, right? That's saying hey, this is what we want to do. I think that if, if Black Lives Matter tried to say reparations now, probably would have hit a lot fucking different because that's a complicated policy prescription, right? I think I'm that's sorry. a good point. I think that's a very Could good you point. Link the Pew research? I think, I'll give you that. Uh, I, I think on top of that, uh, yes, like, I, 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 I linked two articles, and in those articles, linked to research. I think it might be Pew, it might be somebody else. Sorry. Destiny is your turn. Hey, I, I think the important thing to keep in mind is that, like, if somebody presents to you the idea or the concept of Black Lives Matter, you kind of have to be a huge asshole to, to like, be against this. Now, some Sounds people might chime in with like uh, all white or white lives matter, all lives matter, blah, 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 some other thing. But like to just come out and be like, oh no, black lives don't matter, blah, blah, blah. Like that's a pretty hard slogan to fight against. And the message that it sells is like relatively popular, even in the United States, believe it or not, as much as you might want to think it's a white nationalist country, or whatever. But ACAB, it is totally, totally possible that you could take people that would otherwise be allies to a cause and completely turn them against you because you decide to paint an entire institution with an incredibly broad brush. And people's like relationships to their local police departments are going to be way different. Like some bumfuck town in the middle of nowhere is going to view their police officers way differently than like the Chicago Police Department or the <laughs> LA Police mm -hmm. Department. Like to just paint the whole institution with a broad brush makes it so that you end up catching people that would ordinarily agree. They're like, oh yeah, BLM, like, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, sure. Who, who then hear like, all cops are bastards? Oh, I don't know about that one. Like you end up catching Dude, that's reasonable people. That's almost like saying that rednecks should just like what would those people, protesters, right? What would those people that have done? So, 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 that point so if you want to head that direction, I'll argue If you want to head down that road, I'll argue that. Did you say it or did you not say it? I didn't say it. There's an entire quote there. But I mean, like you were talking redneck militias should mow down protesters. Oh, okay. Uh, what was, what's the, wait, what's the end of the quote? Yeah, yeah. We're getting off the track. All right, to okay. end this, so, you gotta end this. So, so, end so, so, so um, back, back to this, right? Can I? So, oh, hold on. Back, back to this. Um, what, what Justin was saying? Um, yeah, exactly that, right? Um, so a person who would would say, oh yeah, I guess you have a point, BLM, right? You have a point. Um, uh, with what you're talking about, and hey, that George Floyd um, uh, guy got a, got a really rough deal. Like, that shouldn't have happened, right? Uh, but then I hear a slogan, right? I hear a slogan, and then that's it. So, what that person, that person who turned around, who, who, who no longer supports BLM, right? Because maybe they're going a little too far. I mean, I heard they, I heard them chant all cops are bastards at one time. Okay, hold and, on. I gotta and, stop because you've, you've done this. Wait, wait. You've done and, this. Okay, I understand what you're Please don't, don't waste the time, okay? You've done the same example like five times. You're presenting this ridiculous. It's okay. not ridiculous. Here's what you're presenting. You're saying somebody came up to me and they gave me opinion X and it was actually like pretty reasonable. And then somebody came by and they gave me a position that was 10,000 times more radical in that direction. And now all of a sudden they're not sure about position X. That's not an irrational feeling. In no, fact, that is a totally rational feeling. Not and not only that, not only that, we would look at other people like Republicans the exact same way. You don't We're like a Republican. Understand no, 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 my stop, argument. stop, stop. Come on, you, you go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I, but you don't understand my argument, but go ahead. Do you want me to just give your argument right now in like two seconds? Do you it, said this a million wrong. times. Go ahead. Okay, sure. Oh, okay, oh, you know, I'm gonna explain it, and then you explain it. You tell me. You, I'm okay. curious. You explain it differently. Okay. So you're saying, wow. So you take this person, and he's totally on board with Black Lives Matter, and he hears it all, and he's like to totally favorable to the entire movement. And then all of a sudden, he hears some angry people come out, and they try to explain the concept of ACAB, and you know, they're not totally on board with it. And now you're telling me that these people who are originally on board with BLM and who are down with the cause are all of a sudden going to be against it? Either one, those guys weren't truly with BLM in the first place, or two, I don't believe that these types of people actually exist, Destiny. Now, what's your take? Is it substantially different than that? It's a little bit different, man. <laughs> only, only a tiny bit, but you've, you've got it. Okay, it is exactly that. No, okay? no, no. So, so no, well, my I'm point... telling you. Okay, go ahead. Finish, finish, finish. I'm just, I'm telling you that it is not irrational for somebody to be worried about further action. And what we should be doing as Americans that participate in a democratic process is hammering the fuck out of the places where we agree. Okay, I think that. Uh, like defund the police had like 11% support or whatever. Like that slogan had like 11 or 18%. I think it might've been a cab or something had 11% and defund the police had 18% of support. But like 68% of Americans support some form of police reform. Like hammer the issues where you guys agree with each other. Like, so if we're all screaming about like body cams or uh, use of force policies, then get the, do the progress there. Don't go to the most radical fucking extreme thing and then turn around and be like, oh, I can't believe you guys aren't on my side anymore. Now that I'm talking about literally abolishing the system where every single actor 
you're a bastard. Now you think so, I'm too extreme now? Did you so, never like black people in the first place? That's such a woke scold like way to approach things. So no, Man. okay, no, hold on. I'm going to respond oh, to this. So, yeah, I uh, don't worry. I've got you all down on, on the list, right? So uh, hold on. We'll go. A red Charlotte. I got you after Wordy. Um, okay. Uh, so I'll respond to uh, Destiny. Um, and sorry if I was talking over you. I didn't mean to do that. I apologize. So, um, so my problem, <laughs> my problem is, is again, the, uh, those people, right, were, were not actually a real supporter. So I'll say it again. Oh That's my, my point. God, you're no, just no, wrong. No, no, no. But no, like, hold on. What, 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 was the, what was the use of this person, right? If they were uh, uh, so easily turned, right? So now, and once again, I'm not saying they're that not you easily can't. turned. They're being turned by radicals. I'm saying I, well, there will always be radicals in the movement. There will always be yeah, radicals in the movement. To, so when like, so we decided MLK so, okay, earlier, so, what did M wait, wait, what did MLK try to do? His fucking margins. His get rid of the fucking radicals. So yeah, why can't we do but, the same but thing? Radicals exist. Hold on, hold on. But what the, then? Okay, Des, Destiny. Then what? Then what do we think? What do we think? We look back, right? Look back on the '60s, right? So like, oh yes, uh, MLK, like uh, 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 a term we loved here, right? Like um, after he's been Santa Claus uh, um, by fucking uh, the corporations, right? So yeah, uh, a term we love but he was a radical himself back then like let's, let's not forget that but okay there were other radicals so the easy the easy culprit here is um uh uh Malcolm x right the easy culprit is Malcolm x so um he had a more radical uh, uh vision right um what was uh mlk supposed to do right like what was the movement supposed to do? and what should we look at and how should we view uh white americans who who might who who were maybe tangentially on board with what mlk was saying right but the moment they heard of uh malcolm x they dropped it right those people are like you know what you know what maybe uh maybe we shouldn't change things right maybe you were talking about like uh how black people need the right to vote but I hear this uh, uh, Michael Max uh, bastard, and uh, I, I just don't like it. I'm, I'm turned off. I, I'm turned. You know what? That's a good but the that's way they totally, are. Totally. Let me explain. Okay, let me give another example for why this is legitimate. And mm -hmm. it sucks, but this is how people think. Okay, mm -hmm. there is a lot of people that would support some form of gun reform in the United States. But if you talk to gun owners, one thing that you'll commonly hear, especially out of a lot of fucking stupid NRA people, and I hate the NRA and I hate most gun owners. Okay, but something you will hear out of other gun owners is, you know, I think I'd be okay with like certain types of restrictions on like maybe like bump stock or like expanded background checks. But what I'm worried about is that if you give the Democrats a little bit, they're going to come after everything. And I think that's a legitimate fear. When you're thinking about how to be politically effective, sometimes it is scary when you want to give in a little bit and there's this insane radical on the other side that these people appear to be allied together with. And it's like, well, fuck. I mean, like, I kind of like what person A was saying, but dude, person Z way down there, he's like in a crazy direction and they seem to be okay. Just, I don't know if I even want to give any ground to person A because Z might be what's coming next. I think that's a totally legitimate, like maybe not legitimate, but it's a rational way of, of like understanding how other people so, think. There should be so nothing crazy or Okay. Um, I thought that was very interesting. The idea you said is like, you know, these people are not useful to the movement. The people, person that would quickly be like turned off. I that reminded me of a conversation I've read about that was happening amongst anti-abortionists in the 1980s. They wanted to drop the rhetoric of like baby killers, and they wanted to do, you know, stop kind of like softly supporting, um, like, like harassing people at abortion clinics because what they said, they made the exact same argument. They said people that are going to be turned off from saying baby killers don't actually care about the lives of the unborn. If they actually cared about the lives of the unborn, they'd be on board with us. But what they found was that having more people People that are more kind of moderately against abortion on board was worth it than just having the radicals. I think that's the exact same problem we're having here. I'd rather have people that are okay on the board with police reform, but not all the way there, than have just the people that are all the way there. So my problem is that, uh, uh, once again, I've made it clear that uh, you can do both, that I won't um, spend my time, because I think what, what we do here is that we spend all this time like um, uh, policing um, policing uh, the uh, rhetoric of a movement, right? Like this is such an easy uh, a, a target, right? Like policing the rhetoric uh, of a movement and saying, well, you shouldn't be uh, saying this because this might turn off this person, this person, right? We spend a lot of time policing the rhetoric of a movement when actually, uh, rather than actually engaging with that movement. Um, and so the fact that the fact that there are radical elements who will uh, uh, say radical things, right? Like that's inevitable to, to any movement, right? So like, if you are, are actually going to engage with a movement, if you actually have a chance of doing that, you're actually going to want to find out what it's about, right? And, and, and have a clear understanding of the landscape. If, you, if you're not, then you're not. 
and that's okay too. That's okay too. Because, Everybody knows, but radicals extremists exist will exist. Anywhere. But our our job to bully them the fuck out of the movement and bully them the fuck away That'll from our spaces, so that they, it will, it can I, absolutely. I do it every fucking day no, when I hear don't. some dipshit under fucking a cab. Okay. Of course, I I try my hardest to light that fucking person up yeah. because they're a harm to Great. every fucking cause Great. they they claim to represent. You and it is our obligation if you truly believe in these causes to bully the fuck out of these people until they're too embarrassed to come out okay. and publicly Great. say this stupid Great. shit. One hundred percent. So you yell at a person. It's all, it's on the internet and then and you and cleaned up the movement great yeah sure that you definitely did that um hold one on, tweet hold on. at a time hold on hold on yeah uh titan sorry we got to go down this list people have been waiting titan wordy uh red uh kobe um and Is rage titan, oh i still here uh oh, take me off the list IP, it's been Are so you? long that i kind of forgot what i was gonna say all right all right but, but like, titan, also, no, titan, um, titan titan's next titan okay the problem that i have with this issue prime is that it doesn't matter how many people one sec camera that folks whatever don't care um the problem is that it doesn't really matter how many people get radicalized that already agree with a cab mm -hmm. if the whole point is inevitably that you want to change the laws around the issues that happen with police you don't need a cab to get people on your side people like you and dr k already were going to be for these bills that's the only way you're going to be able to enact legislative change and it doesn't matter how many people go with a cab if it doesn't actually get any of the legislation and if it doesn't get popular support because the only way that you're going to enable change is getting laws passed so you can end things like qualified immunity so you can have things like body cameras on police officers and you have the funding to make sure that they can store the videos for a long period of time if you're not in for that and you're not for trying to gather the largest amount of public support not that hot of a take here you actually don't care that much as you do about larping on the issue okay so so here's here's what i would ask you how do you think i would use uh the term uh uh, all cops are bastards. And what what context would would, would do, do you think I would use that term? You're using it on a uh, I don't know what platform term you would right use now. A cap. It, yeah, because I can fucking can. Hold on, because I fuck. Hold on, excuse me, because I fucking can. Because it's my platform. Is there any question yeah. about that? Good. No, are we I'm good not saying that you can. No, we good. <laughs> no, we good. Thanks. No, we good. Thank you. Wait, 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 you're asking. Wait, you're asking a question. I'm, yeah, giving please. An I'm giving an answer. Wait, you, you just asked. I'm saying it doesn't help your cause because people that already agree with you that there are oversteps being taken by the police in the United States and you want to curtail that don't need a cab for them to be on your side. You need fucking normies that have no inclination. They have no understanding of these issues at all. So that you can. So well, you didn't answer my question. You didn't answer my question. That's why I, I already heard all this. You didn't answer my question. And what context do you think I'd be using okay. uh, the, uh, the term a cab? Probably to people that were already on your side. Oh, but it's oh, a difficult oh, thing. Is it gives oh, no utility? Oh, okay, it, great, it, it, great. It so you utility. can acknowledge. So you can acknowledge. But it gives no, 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 no. So you can acknowledge Hi. that I, hunt, hunt. You can acknowledge that I understand um, that uh, what rhetoric is, right? That you use different rhetoric with different audiences, right? Like I've been saying this entire fucking time. Like I've uh, acknowledged from the very fucking beginning. Right, that you we, we 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 both understand that different rhetoric will work, will work for different audiences. Right, we get that. So, like just like you said, that that rhetoric will appeal to a certain uh, a demographic. Right, the more radical demographic, if you want to call that, sure. Right. Um, but then different rhetoric will uh, uh, appeal to like fucking again Jim Bob in Kansas. Right. Like we get that. So we both understand that. So I don't know what what you're what are you telling me this for. So like, we understand no this because we because we, yeah, well, we didn't don't say I'm, that I'm to begin saying, with. Like I'm just saying we've done the rounds of a cab on here for like the past ten months since you started streaming. Okay, mm -hmm. and realistically, there's probably been at least one person in the 10 months here that has probably been turned off of like trying to like join generally speaking like the issues that we support and trying to understand police relationships in a lot of these communities at least one person I, you can say that for any argument on. you can say that for any argument any yeah, argument well, we're trying to be as we're trying to be as even as making right? that point to begin with prime Mom, but then not I, and i was the point that i made differences in rhetoric. And that was the, and that was literally the difference I, I said that multiple times if you guys weren't listening that's your fault but i literally said that multiple wait, times i, wait, I, I, I said that friend. activists can, do, can work on multiple fronts i said it again again check the vod if you missed it if you weren't paying attention to what i was saying so i will say it again use different rhetoric for different audiences i already said it uh, uh kobe you're gonna you're gonna yell at me for yeah that? baby like, I do agree, time though. Then that when we when there's op, when there's like pictures and videos like we got from the summer, where it's people that have signs that say "Defund the police" or "ACAB" or "Abolish the police," and they're standing in front of like tipped over burning police cars. That is bad rhetoric, and that's not where it should be used. Would you agree there? Or would you would say that's you, like? Would a, a you say use? that the media would uh, who was against the movement in general, right, uh, would always choose like the 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 uh, worst 
um, images uh, in the first place, right? Like we, we, would, we would acknowledge that. Absolutely. Like we can acknowledge that. Like for instance, during Occupy Wall Street, right? That the media went out of its way to look for, like for instance, when there was violence happening within the encampments, they made sure to show that. And when they showed like a, a trash and like um, uh, encampments falling apart, they made the show. They made sure to show that, and then like not like an organized march, right? Or not um, uh, them someone cogently um uh um uh, cogently um uh, telling what the movement was about at least uh, as they saw it we can understand that so i would completely agree what i would just argue i mean i know that you would agree with as well but like i would just say we should probably not make these scenes for them right like and i would argue that like, having signs that say defund the police at a big protest for black so matter what, so while there's also a riot going on is just making these scenes so what's your prescription them, right? there do we tear down those signs we, we see them we tear we tear them down yep. like get the fuck out tear them down yeah, no, i mean i would i, I, I don't know what i would do in the moment i would probably in the moment I'd probably try to talk to them but yes i probably going forward i'd hope we don't have that kind of rhetoric at the pro, at public protests like that okay all right fair uh, enough i gotta go I, down that I, down I, this I, list uh because a lot of people have been waiting um but uh down this list of uh, people. Oh, uh, next is Wordy. He's been waiting a long time. Um, then Red, because apparently now you remember something to say. And then Rage, comment, who had his hand up. Okay, so this is how radicals work as a fellow radical. You see, Destiny, you call me a dipshit. The reality is radicals are the people who ultimately define the success of movements. What happens is we have radicals historically moving in movements. We had people, we had socialists, we had communists advocate for eight hour work days. And the reality is radical rhetoric creates moderate, re moderate reform. And the reality is if you have moderate rhetoric, you're going to create milquetoast reform. Because the reality is, if you have you have had people saying you're being too radical for decades upon centuries now, because the reality is, when you have when you fundamentally have those extreme measures of rhetoric, you fundamentally are putting pressures on the institutions that exist. Being a moderate solves fucking nothing. But At the, the end of the day, it's different. moderates are the ones that implement what you're talking about. Like you yeah, can give that same story over and over again about how late, the beginning of the movement. You can give that same story over and over again about the eight hour blah 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 blah. The first person that instituted it was fucking Henry Ford, and it was him that instituted it at his car factories that who, actually got the who? national conversation started. Who? Yeah, no, but, no, no, but, no. He didn't start the national conversation. What happens is he instituted it because of the pressures. Because the yes, radicals this, this are the problem. ones who put the pressures in but the I'm first saying place. That these, these, need the I'm radical saying, advocacy in order to create the moderate reform. But there has to be an intelligent work in tandem where this happens. It can't just be, well, radicals have helped in the past sometimes, so we're all just going to be as radical as possible sometimes. all the time. They've because been at the, been at the think, front of these movements. Do you think that radicals have ever hurt movements? Have they ever hurt movements? Have you? Yeah. Can you give me examples? Sure. Well, the MLK, well, sure. The MLK riots. Okay. Okay. Okay, but you see, just in, riots are, are not they, reflective are they of, radicals? of like as riots a whole. Riots aren't radical. Rally. No, were, no, were no. they? Were they? Were they, 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 they being? Were those yeah, radicals, or were they people responding to uh, to a situation emotionally? Right? Like were those like oh people? Oh my god! No, 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 Riots are not reflective of reality. The reality is that radicals were at the face of the protests. Without radicals organizing MLK's movements, he would not have been able to be at the face of those movements. And people love to portray like people like MLK as like milk milk toast liberals, but the reality is he was advocating for radical economic reform before he fucking died. He wait, was wait, advocating Alex. for radical reform, but he did it in the form of peaceful protest. He understood yes, the he message. Was... I'm not saying radicals can't be peaceful. What I'm okay, saying wait, is that's radical all we're advocacy no, okay. and radical uh, rhetoric. No one, literally no one here is saying that radicals are bad. What we're saying no, is that- You're saying radicals are bad. You've been saying it the entire damn time. No, we're talking okay, about rhetoric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus, holy yeah, shit. So okay, uh, okay. Let, wait, wait, wait. let Destiny it, go. Let Destiny go, please. Yeah, okay, yeah. If you think that's what I said, I don't understand, or I understand why you're upset. Literally, no one here is talking about that. All we're saying you is that rhetoric about the entire time. Let, let him finish. Let him finish. Let what we're saying please. is that the rhetoric is important. Nothing is bad about being radical. There are lots of radical things that you can advocate for in a way that doesn't turn people off from your movement. Fifteen an hour minimum wage is radical. Uh, the idea that all of your college education is paid for is radical. Um, like the way that Bernie Sanders advocated for these things, though, was a way that was like relatively in line with what Americans wanted to hear. It was a good populist message, and arguably 
Bernie Sanders alone possibly has shifted the nation's like ideas on how we argue about 15 an hour minimum wage. But he did that without running around saying shit like kill all billionaires or guillotine the fucking landlords or some dumb shit like that. I'm not saying that all radicalism is bad. I'm just saying we need to be mindful of our rhetoric. Okay, so we gotta, we gotta, we gotta, I'm I'm sorry, sorry, Kobe, Kobe, we gotta, sorry, Kobe, we love people okay, waiting. Right. Let's so go to uh, 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 Red. No, I should be waiting. Thank you. Okay, so I think what, what's happening right now is people are literally talking past each other. So, uh, I think when, when Destiny hears, uh, like, oh, you guys are being radical, um, like, he's, what in his head, right, he's thinking, like, the burning the cars, the, like, all the stuff, right? Uh, when, when, when the he, when he, when, that's what he thinks you're saying, right? But what, what Destiny means when he says, like, radical is radical rhetoric, right? It doesn't mean being violent, right? So, like, saying, uh, being on the streets when you're doing the marches, instead of MLK calling for racial justice, he, instead, he was calling for uh, black separatism, right? Um, which is way fucking more radical than what he was advocating for. And he did do the thing that Destiny is advocating for, which he pushed back against certain elements of the movement. MLK went on national television and said, like, black separatism is, like, something I understand. It's cringe, why people yeah, I well, think that's what he said exactly. His quote was, black separatism is cringe. <laughs> yeah, he, stop. He, he was basically saying <laughs> that I understand why people believe... He usually all, always did these things with people who are more radical than him, right? He would say, I understand why people believe these things, but uh, I, they're wrong and they're counterproductive, right? So, like, while I agree with you that people shouldn't not be radical, right? The point is, how do you go about being radical while still actually getting people on your side, right? So, for example, like the defund the police thing, right? People uh, are almost a majority. It's like 45% of people are on board with the idea. People are on board with the idea of defund the police. But when you say defund the police, that specific phrase, it doesn't get across what the, you're trying to accomplish policy-wise. But when you tell people, oh, do you think that we should redirect police funding to community efforts? Everyone's like, oh, yeah, totally. Right. Even though that is literally what defund the police means. But when you say defund the police, it's equally as radical, but it's like twice as ineffective. Like destiny isn't saying you shouldn't be radical. It's saying if you're going to be radical, right, you have to be smart about it. And you can't just say like dumb fuck things like a cab in the middle of the street and like uh, like um, like set cop cars on fire. OK, right? um, like <laughs> uh, Kobe, Kobe, take over me for a hot second. I got to fucking be. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, no problem. But the reality is that you need that radical rhetoric because like, here's here's how it goes what happens is you have people who radically advocate you don't have to be violent about it you can be radical in your protesting and your methodology of putting pressures in order to create policy change and then from there the radical people platform the people who can advocate who ultimately book agree with you but phrase the rhetoric in a different way and the reality what would have happened what would have happened if our radical elements would have made it so that Asaf lost in Georgia and we had 49 Democrats in the Senate instead of 50? Do you think that that's, that's accomplishing any good goals? But it could have because it Asaf and Warnock is. both <laughs> Asaf and Warnock both ran incredibly moderate campaigns and they had to push back against a lot of radical rhetoric. Uh, they had to fight against that. They absolutely did. They yeah. were super moderate. They weren't even pro Medicare for all. Okay, well, would, these guys I, were I, I incredibly moderate. Likely to call Warnock more. Well, of a their whole campaign they were campaigning well, on the, the two thousand dollar check, right? That was like one of the. Th one of the things that the Republicans, I remember, using against them was that uh, Raphael Warnock is a radical this, radical that, right? Wasn't that radical one of the main radical. talking well, points? Well, hold on, everybody. While I'm moderating, I have to have all the cameras off because I have a shitty laptop. So when pe people want to talk, I need you to let me know verbally, okay? I can't see your camera. So who wants to be in line to talk, to talk okay? I wanted to like... I'm going to let everybody finish, yeah. But then it, who else? So Red Charlotte, uh, GSU, you want to yeah. get in on this? Yeah, okay. but I'm I'm yeah. after. Okay, it was already. So we'll, finish, we'll do Red Charlotte, and then we'll go to Rage Comet. Okay. Okay, so basically is so like like let me reframe my brain. So like basically is what you're saying is because of the radical elements, but the reality is, by by not having those radical elements present, you basically decrease the level of uh, effective reform you're going to have. Because what I don't agree. I think oh, if our elections have shown us anything, it's been a race to the middle to get people in the middle and on board with your causes. Really, yeah, because centrists are bad. Because what happens that, is that doesn't. No, no, because centrists never change anything. What happens is centrists are often less charitable to the left than they are to the right, and the centrists and conservatives are going to frame even the most moderate liberals 
as leftists. Like, for example, like radical liberal Raphael Warnock. Because the reality is, it's a me mixture of one, they're going to associate the far left with the left. And th th the reality is, there's not going to be a distinction between the two groups for them, because ultimately, in their mind, they don't care about us. They want us to fucking die. I think it's, th this is a really extreme take, okay? That was a really extreme take. But I think that how well you can frame somebody as a radical leftist, <laughs> it's probably going to come down to how much radical left stuff they actually preach. And with, no. with Warnock, yes, with Warnock and Ossoff, Neither of these guys had very radical positions. So Loeffler could repeat that attack line over and over and over and over again, but it didn't seem like it was that effective. I mean, both of them won. Um, I, I don't know how well that played when there weren't very many radical statements either of them had made. Like this weird take, this this is very like online take. The idea that like, oh, like, well, everybody's going to be painted as a radical anyway, so we might as well be as radical as we possibly can yeah. be because there's going to be no difference whatsoever. That just that doesn't play out. It works. But that doesn't play out like in any state. So if that was true, yeah, then we could make the argument that like a radical Democrat is just as likely to win in any state as like a as like a moderate Democrat. And that's just well, not the true. Really the conservative party is because AOC is, play, is running in like a plus 40 blue district. Go go let AOC win in fucking West Virginia she's and then really talk to me about how. No, boy. She's, she's, she's pretty hot. Oh, that's a bad thing. Oh, come on. Whenever she is like Don't. historically more on the, like the liberal to the left. She is not like far left at all. She is. She, more, compared sure, to sure. the average Democratic person, Wait, who they, she's very yeah. far left. lost in this. This is not an important point. Um, but uh, thanks, thanks for that. Uh, we'll go to uh, uh, Red Charlotte Rage and GSU. But chat, tell me, um, while I was gone, how many times did Kobe agree with the enemy and betray me? You let me know, please. All right, uh, go ahead, uh, Red Charlotte. <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I don't. I don't. Uh, uh, so I agree with almost both. So like Destiny, I think this helps your point, but like not in the way you're saying. So. Warnock and uh, uh, Ossoff, like, ran moderately, right? But they are extremely progressive, right? They are extremely radical relative to the median, right? They, they aren't, like, milk toast, right? But the thing is, they marketed themselves to be as palatable to Georgians as possible, right? Which was, like, it, it, it is, like... It helps your argument, and it helps like uh, Wordy's argument a little bit that you can be radical. It's just about how you go about getting into power and getting people to believe in the things you believe. So, um, like, uh, it's like I'm like a socialist, right? And like when I go about talking about tax policy and social democracy, right? Um, I don't go around saying, "Oh, we should chop billionaires' heads off," or "We should like you know eat the rich," right? Or whatever. Those things like feel good, but like. They're not going to like get people on your side. So what, you, what I like to do is I just instead talk about the positives that taxation brings to people's lives instead, right? Instead of talking about how bad like the negative externalities that billionaires bring into society because people don't give a fuck. Talk about how like taxing billionaires will improve their lives, right? So it's equally as radical as in it taxes billionaires out of existence, but it doesn't like use the rhetoric of like chopping people's heads off, bringing out the guillotines, all of that fucking bullshit, right? I don't disagree with that at all. It's like Hillary Clinton said, you have a public position and a private position. <laughs> so so here's, here's, here's how it works, uh, Destiny, is I have my rhetoric, and it purposely platforms the rhetoric more effectively that you're going to have. Us working in tandem together creates a more effective coalition. Yeah, I've, I've heard this narrative before, but I just don't I don't buy it at all. I, just, I mean, yeah, it, I doesn't, it doesn't really work like, when you have like the far left being like, or li liberals being like, we need to do X. And the far left is like, the liberals are actually social fascists. Yeah. They're actually secretly, fa it does actually work. That The pipeline doesn't work. No, they see there's, there's like the bad leftists that are going to be like that. But the reality is those leftists are not. Wait, there are good the leftists. leftists. Um, so, but, <laughs> and, and so like going, uh, this, this, this is crying and whining about these slogans. Ah, uh, it, it really kills me. Um, like, real. <laughs> not as much as when cops kill people because we couldn't oh, pass any legislation because you were so married okay. to your stupid fucking slogans. Right now, maybe it's your fault because maybe it's your fault because all the energy that I could have been oh, using for oh. the movement, right? I was arguing with Theo on like, uh, um, uh, what my sign should be like as I'm marching down the street. Like, no, like. Yeah. Right. Uh, let me just move down. Let me move down. Yeah. When you advocate for a cause, it sucks when you have to spend half your time disavowing the crazy fucking radicals on your side. It's a huge or you could just not. Or you could just not. Or you could just focus, right? It's okay. It's okay. People are, are different points, right? Or people who agree with a movement, right? Um, I disagree within that movement and have a different uh, uh, opinions on like where messaging should go, right? Like I've seen it before. I've literally been a part of it. <laughs> I, I have that experience and like 
losing my mind over uh, what, what the other side wants to do. I get that. So if you're That's like okay. a rational, reasonable conservative, if we imagine there are some of those in the United States, then you should be chill with people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. It's like, oh, she just has a difference in opinion. Well, conservatives are generally not that, uh, do you do you share Marjorie Taylor Greene's goals? I mean, that's that's part of it. Like, do you like are you in the same? Just because you're conservative doesn't mean uh, you share that. Just, okay. Like, there are why Democrats do people, who do not more... share my goals, or uh, there are liberals who don't share my goals. Liberals share your goals way more than conservatives. No, 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 no. I'm saying that like my my overall movement, the things I'm trying to accomplish, right? Like, uh, there there are some of them. Some of them do, and some of them don't. I'm just saying that. Not every just because you're on the left normally doesn't mean that we. Uh, all right, moving on. We're gonna get lost here, but what's yeah, your point? Yeah. Can, I just, can I one thing? Imagine one, one thing. to be a liberal with the most conservative takes ever, i.e., destiny. Whatever. One, 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 one thing here. What the fuck? It is the favorite, oh it is the favorite <laughs> leftist pastime to to make sure every single thing that is said, every single uh, label that is given, it, it matches a certain level of exactitude that 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 uh, that lines up with the the zeitgeist, the cultural zeitgeist on the left. To to complain that there's some amount of uh, a, a, a re requesting that, that that the rhetoric be a little bit softer, it just it comes off as pearl clutching in the extreme to me. It's just like just tone it down just a little fucking bit. It just it it, it this doesn't is the seem pearl clutching. This is the pearl it's clutching. Not that. This is literally the to, pearl like, clutching. Oh, what no, you're doing? Oh no! <laughs> oh, but prime prime. Do you think? Do you agree that if someone if two people two two um timelines right same protest. Um, both are shown on TV because obviously I, sh I know I understand the media will, uh, depending on the station, depending on the proclivities of the media at any given time, will try to make, especially like Fox News, will try to make a movement look as bad as possible, right? But you should, I, I would hope that you would agree that the less you have of something, the harder it is for them to point bad stuff no, out, right? Because there's agree. not enough to point out, right? So like, would would a, would a would a protest with a sign that says like "fuck all cops, get rid of cops" um, versus abolish the police, like? Black Lives Matter, in which world are people more likely in their head watching that television broadcast to be, you know what, like, so, maybe they're on to something. So right? Destiny, so Destiny, so Destiny is saying uh, a boss of police would be part of the bad time. You gotta get swamp. You so, gotta like, dude, yeah, yeah. You gotta get but, something else. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, so, so, yeah, so yeah, Destiny will be one of those liberals yeah, that complaining about a boss of police as well. Like, I understand uh, but no, I, I understand the point. No, literally, what? And, I, and I've already, I've already. Uh, um, uh, stated this, and I'll state it again because no one seems to be listening. So I'll say it ten. I'll say another one, one more time, right? In case you guys didn't hear it, right? You use different rhetoric for different audiences, right? So going to that march, right? Going to that protest, right? If you're saying that Kobe made this point, already made this point, and I responded to this point. Um, uh, uh, if you're saying uh, certain signs or certain slogans might um, be more damaging. Then yes, I agree, hundred percent. Yes, you can have um, slogans and associate that with a movement, right? And that be damaging, um, like like uh, it's abolish the police. Like, oh, abolish the police, yeah. Um, <laughs> but no, I've already, I've, I've literally already uh, made that statement. So, are we good there? All right, I guess we're good. All right, moving on. Uh, we got rage comment. We got GSU if, if he turns on his camera, and then charm hole. <laughs> All right. Um, we're actually kind of moved past a lot of the stuff that I wanted to bring up. I do think that the current political landscape where we have a super, super polarized, like I don't, I know there's been times in American history where things have been less polarized. Um, but because of how polarized are, we literally have people who like don't believe that uh, a virus or a pandemic is happening because of how polarized things are. And so when I think of uh, police reform or changes, um, like rhetoric matters. Like you don't want to play into the the polarization. You don't want to use. Like I, I know, Prime, that you were saying that you don't. You're not going to use the same rhetoric for um, like allies as you would for um, opposition or even just centrists that you're trying to convince. Mm -hmm. um, but people still hear. People still hear those things. Um, and other people who aren't being as uh, conscientious as you will have those signs that do use the extreme rhetoric. Um, and so I think that. While infighting in, in, in a movement is not um, productive, there is some level of utility to like pointing out to people, hey, uh, when we're going to face the public, we should use this sort of rhetoric um, to make the movement more unified, more efficient, more effective Agreed. in reaching its goals. Agreed. I, I, I don't disagree with you at all.
Thank you for that. Um, quickly, uh, and we'll go to Charm. I believe uh, the Charm Hole is next. Um, oh no, uh, GSU then Charm Hole. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, before that, um, uh, Red Charlotte wants to uh, take her exit. Um, thank you, Red Charlotte, for joining us, and thank you for invading Amazon Lily up previously. Yeah. All right. Just the Bye, last Red thing Charlotte. I want to say is that you know optics do matter, but you know it's all about degree. And for example, uh, you know sometimes you got to take the hits. You got to let the cops hit you with those water cannons. You got to make them look bad. You got to make yourself look good. All right. Uh, good night, guys. Fair enough. Good Thank night. you so much. Okay. Um, um, one, if I could add something really quick, Brian. Like one thing I'm worried about with the idea of like, this rhetoric with different audiences is like, I don't think everybody is going to be as careful with it as you, right? There's going to be a lot of very silly people that hear this shit and then decide to do it. That's what I worry about the normalization of what stuff do we do like about ACAB. That? What do we do about that? Well, yeah, like what I again, what I always say before, exactly. like, try to push back, try to try to explain against. That's it, why yeah. it's a waste of time to start uh, to to do this, to do exactly this, to be arguing about this rhetoric. That's why it's a waste of time. Because like Destiny, I, I know he thinks he can, I know he's trying his very best, but no, he cannot bully every single leftist off the internet. He's trying his very best. I, no, like, I can't do he, it on my own. That's but we all have to do it, it. together. Yeah, it's, <laughs> all, it's all of us together have to embarrass <laughs> and <laughs> shame the, your the your radical <laughs> fucking <laughs> crazy fucking people. It's all, it's all of our responsibility. <laughs> Together. Well, it okay. kind of happened naturally with the abolish and defund. Mm -hmm. Abolish was kind of naturally pushed to a little bit more hyper radical, while defund was the kind of the more socially accepted. That it, it kind of happens naturally in some way. I, right? I think. Yeah. Uh, oh man, I got this a different subject. Fuck. Um, because I want I want to tackle that too, more. but um, uh, I gotta move on. Uh, 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 GSU and then Trumbull. Okay. GSU, turn your fucking camera on. You're pretty. I can't. <laughs> I'm literally in like pitch black darkness. I only you got on because in. I saw the title said "Should we abolish the police or something?" <laughs> Silly nonsense. Um, oh but yeah, I agree absolutely with Destiny. That's of course you I, do. <laughs> I come, that's why I come here all the time so we can bash right, bash super lefties with super bad take. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're um, not fighting any good arguments either. So. Mm. So what not? What a dude! I mean, GSU hasn't said anything. We chill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let let, let GSU uh, hang himself with his own terrible liberal arguments. Go ahead, GSU. We're waiting for you. Nah, um, <laughs> no, I'm waiting on people to say more stupid stuff. I think everybody's called out Wardy as being dumb, so I'm just waiting on. Uh, no, nah, Wardy's so not dumb. Well, you know, you're not providing good arguments, so. Yeah, um, yeah. Wardy, I'm I'm backing up. I haven't heard everything you said, but uh, I, I'm I'm backing up. All right, uh, let's go, um, Trumbull. All right, so Destiny's role playing as the pearl clutching asshole that is pretending to speak for the permachuds, who would get mad about spicy leftist rhetoric, which is rich coming from uh, him of all people, you know. But uh, now we've spent a very long time talking around the issue uh, than the issue itself, which is to deplete the power from police. Okay, for more specifically for more civilian liberty. Okay, this is this is the issue we're supposed to be talking about. And instead, for the past two hours, it's been, oh, bastard is actually really offensive toward boys who were deprived of fathers. So if we could just kind of <laughs> shift around that. I hate my permachud. You mean like but, anybody you know, that's not a dumb fuck online I, leftist like you? Oh exactly. my God, dude. And, here, and this is, it's funny because you can see the difference in strategy, mad, right? Mad, so mad, when, mad, when, mad, when I have... Mad, mad, mad. Dude, I am dude. mad that all my methods like you make actual fucking progress. Right. Right. I am fucking mad. Yeah, yes. It, it, like, I think I think you can see the difference in strategy, right? When when my goal when I talk to people, my goal is usually how many people can I convince to my argument. When you talk to people, your goal is to like see how cool you can look in front of your friends. Like mad. that's essentially what you're saying. You can call yeah, me mad all you want. I'm not mad at all. I think I'm debatable, dude. dude. No, it's yeah, not. It's not. It's not. Like, it's not. Like, when, like nobody, say. nobody is running around screaming "A cab, A cab, A cab" online and like yeah, converting people in the middle. And, and, and... No, no, all right, so, all right. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's knock it off. Let's focus. No, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. We're moving past that. Give me a one on one with him. Give me a one on one. one. I'll do it. Tell me another time tomorrow night, okay? Well, we can talk about that all you want if you want. All right. I don't want to make a whole panel about that take. Um, but um, yeah, no, like when you when you talk to people, the goal should probably be to convert people over to your side. And when you scream the most radical fucking rhetoric you can, and then when people are like, "Well, hold on, that sounds radical," and like, "Oh, you're just tone policing." Well, guess what? Tone is like really effective. Like if you have any people skills whatsoever, you know that tone is incredibly fucking effective. And to pretend that they're not just shows you have no interest whatsoever in convincing people about what you believe. Okay. Um. Sorry. Uh. Okay, that's not gonna. Uh, are you? You know you're muted. I hope you know you're muted. Yeah. Okay. 
I, yeah, I, 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 I hope you're just pantomiming here. Um, but okay, all right, well, I mean, actually, I hope you're not pantomiming here because that's kind of weird. Um, but. <laughs> Charm holds a tier three sub, so he's always welcome here. Okay, moving on. Um, so, uh, <laughs> Capitalism Network. Uh, but, <laughs> oh, I guess that was the end of the list. Um, oh, Titan, you want to go? Go ahead. Um, yeah, looks like Charm holds Swamp Fox. Stop trying to fucking derail Swamp Fox. I know you want to get into like the fucking mowdown shit with Destiny, but literally no one cares. Just shut the fuck up and keep on topic. Yeah. Literally no one cares. Yeah. You want to hear your voice heard and you want to like fucking talk to Destiny, Oni Chan, whatever fucking shit. <laughs> no one cares. Literally no one cares, my dude. Okay. So, no, just your fucking I... ego down and just please shut the fuck up. No one cares but you. Please. Uh, uh, okay, Swamp, Swamp Fox? Swamp Fox? I'm going to go to yeah, you, you but like, fucking, let's not you know, do the whole mode down thing. We can talk about it at some other time. Yeah, that's muted. Anyway. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, never yeah, mind. Yeah. Never yeah. mind. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Never mind. Um, so <laughs> I was going to go. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, anyway, gotta... <laughs> to finish my point, to finish my point okay. before I was rudely interrupted by a bunch of mad assholes, <laughs> spicy rhetoric is great for a multitude of reasons, and choking out Cendris is one of them. Personally, I love it as a barter token to argue to barter past the point of concession that we want, right? So their argument is on this point, okay, since I was accused of derailing, since we can stick to this point, they say, oh, it'll take the centrist, it'll choke them out, it'll get really, they'll get really upset, and then they won't vote for the, you know, defunding the police or giving them less power or giving civilians more power. Personally, if there's anything I've learned from Trump, it's that in the art of the deal, you have to argue past the point of concession. So whatever you want, you want to go as far out as you can. So then the concession leads closer to what you want, right? So me personally, again, I think that all cops are bastards. I also think they're Nazis, but that's an N-word that white people hate. So... <laughs> But, I just say that. Stay away from spice too, you know. Just Dude, you're getting some so right now. Sure oh my god, he's really right? mad. He so, got even. You know, but I, anyway, you found the police. I, I I didn't say that. I didn't say that last part. Uh, <laughs> uh, that would be. There are distinctions. Okay, when distinctions. you say no, honestly, I actually, your allies, Prime. No, no. no yeah, so, I, I I gotta say, I, I agree with Charmhole. Let's choke out all the centrists and the liberals and the sock dems and the social democrats and everybody, and it'll just be us, and we won't. We'll be, we'll be correct. Yeah. We'll just have our little lefty purity circle. We'll just be correct all the time. We'll be fucking based. No. We'll jerk each other off. It's gonna be awesome. No, hold on. Hold well, on. Five, lo- five yeah. looks. Five looks. Only yeah. exist on Twitter. I love no, feeling no, good. good. Yeah. Not just Let- exist on Twitter. So okay, I right, just want to say I didn't, I didn't say that last part, uh, but um, I just don't I don't I don't see the point, and I'll can you say I don't see the point of fucking tone policing uh, people who are experiencing this rage, right? Like who like people who have experienced um, violence uh, from the police, right? And they say all cops are bastards, right? Because they literally experience it with their bodies, right? Uh, they literally uh, maybe have to have to bury loved ones because the police murdered them, and then of course got got off scot free because the justice system backed them up, like. We, we we like like spending our time like being worried about this. this that's the part of, the, of charm whole statement that i fully agree St- spending all this time worrying and crying about what some people may be saying right like you just dis- it's fine to disagree i totally get you to disagree right there are plenty of uh, uh statements um from movements that i disagree with like otherwise like yeah this this sounds good but this statement sounds a little weird to me yeah sure i get that that's the thing but to be crying about this and to be, and to spend an endless amount of breath on this when you could be putting uh, putting that breath on actually advancing the movement right uh, I just, I, I don't get it, but that's okay. Um, but it's kind of uh, it's it's like, how do we advance like, the movement if no one's on our side? Yeah. No, 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 but that's, but that's, but that's, but that's, but is there is that the truth? Is that the truth, uh, uh, Kobe? That no one's on our side. That already that the BLM I, has been a complete I failure, think, right? Has that no. been the truth, or have we actually seen the stunning success um, uh, through uh, through these protests, right? Um, uh, through the images that have come out, right? We've, we've actually seen that. So it actually hasn't destroyed the movement, right? Like we, okay, we, wait. We can, can acknowledge can, that, can right? I ask, can I ask one clarifying question for for Prime, and then maybe I might actually be fully on board with you. So. <laughs> Are you saying that, like, instead of hyperfixating on what somebody might say, uh, you know, on in in their own little fucking circles and their own little fucking Twitter groups, mm-hmm. and they might say a cap, blah 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 blah, instead of getting so hyperfixated mm-hmm. on like the types of language or the types of words people use, we should be more focused on like the broader ideas related to social justice or like the actual things that are being discussed, and not just like hyperfixating on like an individual and some edgy saying they might say or whatever. Uh, yes, yes. 
Okay, I'm so glad you came and joined me on the N-word and private topic. Thank you so much, Prime. I knew <laughs> I that if I were getting to like, get you to agree with me on it. Oh yes. I'm so oh happy you came over, Prime. Oh, oh my God, dude. It's been a long Prime, time, but I knew you'd be over here eventually. Wait, wait, wait. Is the no, I support right Destiny. I support you. I support you as an individual, definitely, right? Um, do I support everything that you uh, uh, say? <laughs> Obviously not. I'm, I'm, always, I'm sitting here for fucking hours on end with you, like proving how you're wrong on this point, on that point, on this point, right? Like, so no, it's okay. I love you, brother. We are, we are in the same movement, you and I, right? Um, but I don't have to endorse everything um, uh, that you say because you, I mean, look, what you put out there is a lot of straw, man. We, we've been over this, but yeah. But thank you, uh, <laughs> uh, buddy. I really appreciate that. Okay, um, let's go to uh, Stardust. Um, and uh, I think Rage Comment also has hand up, and then we're back to Wordy. So you were making the point about people putting, have had their like bodies, like, um, I guess, like, uh, they paid with their bodies, I guess, with uh, police brutality, right? But like, I would uh, kind of pose the art, the question to you: How many people have um, been in situations where they were paying with their bodies and police stepped in, right? How many people have had, like, you know, have, oh, don't don't laugh no, at that? No, so I can't. Oh, excuse me, I can do whatever I want on my platform. You don't tell me what I can do, uh, right? Oh, I can right. laugh. Okay, all right, whatever. I, no, um, no, no, I, no, whatever is true. No, no, d excuse me, no, don't do that. Don't oh, do that okay, to me. Oh, okay, okay, let's hold just on, ignore no, the domestic violence one Excuse me, hold on, hold on, excuse me, hold on. You can, you're free to have whatever reactions you have. I've never tone police your reactions, right? I've never done that. Don't do that to me. You can you can react however you want, but go I think, ahead. I think you can finish I think your point, but don't. But, but okay. do not tone, try to tone police me. Don't do that. I'm not tone policing you, can, you dude. Oh, oh yeah, I, but I can't I can't laugh my own platform. Yes, I can't fucking laugh. No, if I find yeah, something I'm not funny, actually I'll telling laugh. you what to do. Okay, you Prime. literally just did that. But go it's ahead. It's just go like ahead. it's a go figure ahead. of speech. Okay, whatever, dude. That's not a figure um, of speech. Uh, but all right. What, okay, fine. <laughs> Um, no, but people, people like, uh, we, if you want to go into it, like people, again, like I said earlier, people go through like domestic violence. They have like, um, they have like, uh, they get lost or whatever. They like, um, they have like family members who get lost, like demented family members who run off, <laughs> like police help with all those things. If you're going to say like that, that, um, people shouldn't be pro clutching or whatever. And that people, because people like pay with their bodies with brutality. Yeah. Brutality is awful, but like, you have to look at like how the rhetoric, um, sounds to those people who've been helped by police, right? Like they're going to say no, like hell no. But, but you see the issue here is st statistics versus anecdotes. People can have experiences positive with the police. Yes. But the reality is the majority of people either have negative experiences or know people who have, have negative experiences. A, like, do you have like a like a thing that <laughs> wait and shouldn't that? Can shouldn't the majority that? shouldn't the majority of people well, have negative experiences with the police? <laughs> isn't that kind of isn't that kind of the point of the police? Like, what do you mean? Like, I would expect, for instance, like the majority of people that like have negative experiences with like security at like casinos. Well, yeah, of course, it's fine. If security is being called or the police is being called, you're probably gonna have a negative experience. I don't yeah, know if that polling data is like that strong. Like. Gamer brain right there. Um, How is it the gamer brain? What? No, wait, hold on. Wait, what is it? What is this data like? Well, the majority of people have negative experiences with people that are literally called in to like remove them from an area. Like, I mean, I would imagine oh, the negative agreeing. experience would be pretty. Um, no, I'm agreeing with you. I'm a gamer. That's smart. are people literally asking me to become on, come on the Scuff podcast? Like, I don't know why people are like no, spamming no. that. No, 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 that was a meme. No, no, oh, no, okay, it's not true. Okay, that's a meme. Right. Thank true you. Guy. I was very confused. Um, all right, moving forward. Um, so. Yeah, um, thank you for that. Uh, Rage? Um, okay. Uh, there are four points that I wanted to address. Some of them were from Charmhole uh, that I kind of want to push back on, uh, with the, like, the bullying out of centrists. Like, we, you need centrists. Like, you, can't, you can't win um, policy or push anything if you don't have the centrists. You have to convince them to no come to your side. Or at least, okay. well, yeah, yeah, to come to your side. And so... If, I, I don't necessarily believe that there there are no centrists. There, there's plenty of centrists. Um, okay. Uh, I think sure. Prime mentioned just extreme. Um, actually, no, I'll save just that for last. Do yourself a favor. But move. Gotcha. Moving the um, like moving the over to window or arguing past the point of concession. That that there, that is a um, negotiating tactic that can be used. I just don't know if it's necessarily as effective when the the country is so polarized literally so many things come down on party lines um if you move it past if you move it too far they're just not going to come to the table 
And so that has to that has to be a consideration uh, when you are utilizing um, radical rhetoric. If you make it too radical, regardless of um, the people who do have um, moderate, they just, they won't get get uh, anybody to come to the table because the radicals are on their side saying things that have dissuaded people from engaging at all. Um, the last point I wanted to um, bring up was to Prime, who was talking about we shouldn't tone police victims who have been like abused by police. And I agree with that. Like if somebody has their personal story or they're talking about the, the experiences that they've had, we shouldn't tone police. Like if somebody wants to say a cab because they personally were hurt by police, fine. But that doesn't mean that your movement has to be um, uh, centered around that. Not, I'm not talking about the overall black lives matter movement being centered, but I'm talking about the radical elements don't even have to be centered around that because a movement doesn't have to just be what the individuals are. You can say, yes, we understand your experiences, but this is more productive for us to put our energy towards. Based. Can I respond since yeah. I was called out? Please, go ahead. Just, uh, there is no such thing as a centrist because uh, if you are a centrist, then whoever's in charge in that, you know, in that town, then that's their point of view. That's just who they're for. That's all. Like, so Wait a minute. Know. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. When we say centrist, we're not talking about specifically like little tiny areas around the country. We're talking about the political leanings of the whole country, left or right. Like you're not just talking about, well, this one city in this one district might have a super far right leaning, but there's one guy on the left. Okay, I'm making no fucking sense. Hold on. <laughs> wait, you, wait, when we talk about centrist, we're just talking about people that are more politically moderate. That's what we're yeah, talking about. Yeah, not, not just like, yeah, yeah. But, but the issue that comes with political moderate is because if you have the politically moderate itself, there's a lot of like arguments that of either side being like crazy, where one is like right, like conservative or like full on like right Nazis versus like leftists who are like, hey, we want like basic human rights. So the, the issue with moderates themselves is because they're going to treat both groups as equally bad when the reality is one has advocation for human rights versus the people who don't no. want human rights. No, so I, don't, I don't believe in moderates because not, you're making a political critique of centrism, not the idea that centrism's, centrists do or don't exist. I yeah, agree but, with but you. Because of that political centrism no, itself. This is wrong. There are moderates like but, my A lot of our... <laughs> so, Gambit, you're really quiet. Policy. We look at policy from both sides and when you say stupid shit like all cops are bastards, we walk away from that argument, but we support other things like M4A or like like free education, blah, blah, blah. We. And then there are some conservative things that are stupid, and then there are some conservative things that are good, and that's what moderates do. You're, you're, not, you're not moderate cop. then. You're not moderate. Wait, you're what, for what, the what other side that? then. You're pro-cop. No, okay. wait, it's so, not. So two things earlier when we oh talked my about God. when earlier when we talked about look earlier when we talked about laws and how they're created a fuckload of laws were created before any of us were alive. Okay, fucking any of us. They're all fucking grandfathered in. So don't fucking tell me that we have the very like yeah and even equalized justice what? system. There's nothing. Wait, then just justice. vote. Then vote There's it out. We live in a democracy. Vote it out. System. That's so easy. Fucking, vote them out. It's all grandfathered in. Okay. It's not yeah, grandfathered in. Guys, 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 you're, you're, you're making you're making a mistake by taking anything the Charmel says seriously oh, and engaging here? with Why it. Why would I consider okay. anything you say seriously? You Look, stay like, mad, okay? okay. But the truth wait, of the matter okay, hold on. Wait, is that, okay, if if you want to be in a panel and talk about like our system, but you're just gonna come in with like crazy doomer take of like, oh, everything's grandfathered. We have no control. The the corporation controls everything. Blah blah blah. What the fuck is the point of having any conversation at all? Like, go be a doomer somewhere else. But you see, it's to change the ideas of the children who are grandfathering it in like but we the, were the, so when i was a child and i was taking in all of the information that was given to me right from an awesome fucking uh current events teacher that i had in high school who was like i know newsweek sucks but fucking read newsweek because they still have the their fingers on the pulse of this fucking country and the politics that are going on so when as i was a kid i want to do that too to kids who are growing up and because they're the real moderates here they're the ones who are the absolute reflection of what we're doing as a whole 
So when I say a cab and the kid's like, damn, you called all cops bastard fucking why? Right. Then we can, you know, I can radicalize them, which is fucking awesome. But if you're so, 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 so lying on our kids for this, so, so just going out and voting yourself, though, it makes no fucking sense. So, so why are you lying so, so, on our kids? The grandfather thing's in it instead of just voting. Just fucking vote, dude. So here's too many people, too many people, too many people, too many people. Sorry, one at a time. Wait, do you want to respond to that? So the fundamental issue with being either a moderate or centrist is because, like, for example, I was once a moderate, like, like years ago, like, timeline-wise. And what happens is, because of the idea is the, the institutions themselves could be reformed, but fundamentally, minorities are still being hurt, even if the institutions are being minimized. The more we minimize it, we still re realize that the most vulnerable people are still being harmed the most and the institutions themselves are often a signifier of the issues instead of just like mechanisms within the institutions themselves it's the fundamental institutions themselves that are causing the most harm yeah but if yeah. you have no path forward to eradicate the institution then the goal should be to minimize the harm until eradication yes, or reformation I, I, of the yes, institution becomes I agree possible that we should minimize it to the extent but we also have to realize an eventual realization that the institution itself is still causing harm as a whole sure but if your radical point of view is causing the reformation or the minimization of harm from even being possible then you have to look at yourself as being the immoral actor what what part of that didn't you understand i can repeat that sentence verbatim if you need me to yeah, just say it again <laughs> sure if you are doing something in the course of your radicalization that's causing us to not have the ability to minimize the harm so if your movement is so radical that it's hurting other people that minimize the harm, then you are the immoral actor because now you're the one that's furthering or perpetuating harm against the people that are okay, being most harmed. But the reality is that sure. leftist radicals don't have that history at all. That it's not indica indicative of history itself. <clears throat> I, I can't, right, I can't right, think of like what? esoteric examples like, of like the eight dollar an hour minimum wage. I'm going by the current political reality in the United okay, States. Okay, the current political reality is we had like radical argumentation, and then that eventually as like creating conditions that are for like minimization of the harms of institutions as it stands. Okay, the radical reality today is that the person that was able to get the most support in the United States for the minimization of harm was not a radical, was a pretty moderate, pretty progressive, no, radicals, pretty moderate person, Joe Biden. That's that's who we got, yeah, right? But, but and the other reality the radicals, is that more the radical radicals than formed Joe Biden. Without what? The Joe, wait, wait, what? No, wait, what? No, Joe Biden won against the radicals, not because of the radicals. The radicals didn't platform Joe Biden. They were dragged kicking and screaming into the election, okay? The radicals no, didn't we come along after. We kicking and screaming. We advocated and we pushed for him to be into office. We oh, realized that Trump was the God. greater harm here, so we went for the lesser harm. So okay. let's that's go. No, let's go. Let's go. Radical, let's go. Radical let's go. Radical let's take two billion dollars oh, to stop Bernie from getting on the ticket. Let's go to Sansa. Sorry, hold on. Let's go to Sansa and Dylan Burns, okay? Okay. So when, when we talk about like radicals uh, creating a, a better world or whatever the fuck you're, you're saying, n no, not necessarily always, because we saw the, the radical language actually reduce the amount of support for Black Lives Matter at the beginning of the summer. I know I've brought that up like three yes. times, the three times I've been able to speak this panel, but like it, the things that people were pushing that were so fucking far out there actually pushed people away from the movement that they were getting into People yeah, were yes. starting to agree with us. What? Do you have any Sorry. I said yes. I mean, I can pull up some uh, uh, the, the support over chat. the course of the summer that, that showed that, like, at the beginning of it, movies. before people were talking about abolish the police, like, get rid of the police or defund the police or whatever, right? Before that was, like, the major thing. Or before the, the like, three-month-long riot in uh, Portland or any of these other places, right? Before all that happened, even a, uh, like... A, a growing number of Republicans were getting on board with Black Lives Matter because it was really fucking egregious watching someone have their knee on George Floyd's neck for nine minutes, right? A lot of people really didn't fucking like that. Imagine that, right? But as things started getting more and more radical in like certain sects, there was a decrease in the support of Black Lives Matter. So there are examples of radical language or radical actions lowering support if you don't capitalize on the 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 movement itself right in a, an effective way for other factors in that context okay here's a really direct example on the back of that look at the capital look at the capital riots 
The Capitol riots are the best example on the back of that. How many Republicans left the Republican Party because of how extreme that movement was? And I know for a fact that every single lefty on here, and you're not going to admit it now, I know you won't, but the reality is, is that all of you guys would have said like six months ago, oh, I bet that if everybody stormed the Capitol, all Republicans are fascists and they'd be on board with that, blah, blah, blah. That's not true. When that type of radical behavior started to become more popular in the Republican Party, when it culminated in those Capitol riots, a lot of Republicans, a lot of moderate Republicans said, fuck it and left. Which might cause at like lasting harm the to the Republican Party. Moral implications. It's about the optics, because it's in the optics. Because reality is what you're arguing is the moral implications versus the optics. The optics itself is like because the capital riots occurred, the optics were terrible for moderate Republicans. Because of that, they have to change positions and change advocacy. They have to change their rhetoric. And the reality is that historically, radical left people have not engaged in serious harm to optics itself. Dude, that's just yeah, wrong. Wrong. every Democrat running for office is complaining about like all of the fucking a cab and socialist shit, especially wait, with brown wait. voters. Like, so wait, actually, there was there was this entire thing in the early 20, 20th century that was called the split between or the split between what's it called the split, the split between socialists and social democrats, and this happened because that thing I brought up earlier, the whole idea of social fascism. That actually, if you literally what you just talked about, that if we support capitalism at all, we are supporting a system. System that negatively affects workers, negatively affects ex all these different negatively you know, oppressed groups. Therefore, we are actually we are part of the system. This is, has happened. There is historical precedent for people being too radical. The radical element making it impossible for there to be a coalition. Yes, there is historical uh, uh, precedent. If you could link me that, Let, let's go. If you want like a more recent example, we have the COVID relief bill. It was really bad optics when all the leftists wanted to die on the hill of boy. getting the fifteen dollar minimum wage oh, into the COVID relief bill. Oh, it makes it made no sense, oh, and they boy. just want to die on the hill, oh, and so it delayed the passage That's of the bill. A, it's true. What? It's not optics. Okay. Oh boy. That's a. Mm. Oh my god. Oh, we are dropping a lot of fucking truth oh, tonight. God. Oh boy. Oh, oh boy. Uh, oh my god. We're uh, trying to draw us into a separate card. We've already done this. And one more thing for leftist radicalism. For left. Just radicalism. Um, when the Soviet Union joined that non-aggression pact with uh, Germany uh, over the Poland shit, by the way, um, that killed a lot of the leftist momentum that was existing in the United States at the time because well, those movements because, were starting to pick that's, up. That's and that rhetoric is equated, and the reality like, is that you can't you can't like actually equate, but people are going to find a chances to equate things that cause harm to movements. No, oh stop. Wait. So wait, are you saying that literally no matter what you do, people are always going to attack you, and optics don't matter? I'm, what I'm, I'm going to say, to some extent, optics matters, but at the same time, you have to have a fundamental realization that people are going to be opposed to you no matter what you do. Yeah, but it's a matter of how much you can get other people to be opposed to you. Some people are always going to hate leftists, sure, but the USSR signing that non-aggression pact with, the, with, the, uh, with Germany, like, killed leftist momentum in the United States. It was like a death yeah, blow. A, a lot of we, have a, we have another easy example of this, too. Uh -huh. A whole bunch of air-headed, dumbass leftists called themselves Antifa, and now black oh, people boy. are synonymous with riots <laughs> um, because, of stupid, because of the stupid Antifa people that said, oh, the black people need us at these marches for protection. So, so it's a lot of cases of just idiots on the left. So uh, let's, to be fair, I think that's more on the fault of Trump on. overreacting. Let's, let's, stop, 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 stop. We got to move on. Um, uh, Dylan, you want to jump in? <sighs> So I'm very, very sympathetic to like um, ideas of uh, like this type of radical language making great change and bringing forth like they them being on the edge of society that helps bring us forward. Um, there's there's this old essay by Henry David Thoreau in 1849. He didn't just write good books called Civil Disobedience, where he talked in detail about when the injustices of a system become too great, you need to make yourself a counter friction to the system. The problem I have a lot of times when somebody becomes a counter friction to the system, like if somebody vandalizes a Confederate statue and sometimes tears it down, I could see that as uh, in a video game morally permissible because I feel like when we usually when those get torn down, they don't get put back up. The problem is with bad rhetoric though, is that counter uh, you, you attempting to be the counter friction to the system can end up being more fuel to the system. You can be nothing but uh, cannon fodder for, for, for the right or these institutions to point like, see, we're the reasonable ones. Look at this brute over here who 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 calls uh, the honorable men and women of service, some of whom you know in your everyday lives 
bastards and evil. And look at this individual, Charmhole. He thinks they're Nazis. See how bizarre they are? This is this this type of rhetoric is, is obviously uh, going to do nothing but honestly serve the right in a lot of areas. Now, when it comes specifically to, to this, I, I think a lot better is I think a good thing the left needs to do is figure out how to actually put its message in a way that Amer that are deliverable to Americans. A great a talk thing I talk about uh, a lot is how the Republicans message themselves as the party of family values while also being the party that cuts food stamps. Cut services to families. It does not help with family planning. Does not help with with um, the actual contraceptives that would lower the rate of abortions in this country. Uh, all those things are things the Republican Party undermines, and that's simply because of messaging. And I think if the left fixes this messaging, even if um, uh, it's it isn't the like morally justifiable way that like it gets you hard, it might be the best way to actually get that change about. And at the end of the day, what's most important to me. It's not feeling good when I say fuck you or fuck this. It's actually making a change. I no, no, that's better, totally you know, you thing. Um, Let's go. If, if I could respond, because I feel like it was kind of aimed towards me. Just sure, go ahead, please. So I think I'm going to revise my position here because you have presented good arguments. Okay. So ultimately is you're not always going to want to hair. use extreme rhetoric of radical like left argumentation. You're not always going to use it. But you have to admit there is some level of social utility to use of that because the reality is there are some instances where you shouldn't compromise because the reality is when you do compromise to a significant degree you're to some extent you're not going to get what you truly need and change there are instances where you do need to engage in less radical rhetoric i will admit that you've presented good arguments on it i'm realizing some of my argumentation could have some little more level of nuance but you also have to admit there is some level where you have to engage in more radical rhetoric for a certain political purpose. Wordy, do you acknowledge that not all lefties are going to share that same idea, that there are times yeah. when you can use less radical terms? I, I will admit, well, you, the reality is like not every lefty is going to admit, uh, agree to every single thing because lefties aren't high mind. Well, I think a lot of that has to do when you have conversations with people and you get into the deep of like, well, let's let's talk about the like deep like impacts on policy and that and a lot of people will say, I don't give a fuck. This is euphoric. This is a system that has oppressed me for years. This is something that has I've seen uh, kill my brothers and sisters, kill my family members, kill my community, oppress and kill my community. I don't care about being polite. I just want to say what I think. And that is something we need to be sympathetic towards because a lot of people yeah. don't think in this like big strategy way. They just think about how the system has interacted with them and they're just responding to that system. And then when they're responding to the system, uh, they'll, look, they'll look to people saying, well, you need to say this in that way. And to them, it's just it's just home policing. Yeah. They don't well, think of it in the way yeah. that, well, we're saying this not because we want you just to sound polite. We're saying this because we think the better way to actually achieve that system is through this. They just think you're tone policing them because they, they want you just to sound better when you're yeah. outraged, right? Yeah, but there is that fundamental frustration. Like, because what happens is like, tone policing itself, like you can admit, like argue that le like leftists are gonna be like tone policers, but the issue is there's a lot of tone policing more towards the central central side. Like there's a lot of tone policing and it can be harmful because those voices are often denied the ability to like effectively put their point. And then the people are going to like either downplay them or they're going to like say that just your one instance of behavior whenever like, those like a lot of those be like voices themselves are more reflective of like an effective reality as opposed to like anecdotal evidence. I have a question because this is something that's brought up a few times and I hear this all the time and, and it kind of it kind of boggles my mind. A lot of people would be like, OK, so Fox News, no matter what, is going to call us all lefty radicals like a, a radical liberal Raphael Warnock was something that we heard a million times at that debate. The thing is, though, when people are sitting at home and they're watching the television screen, a lot of people, will they've dealt with ads their whole life. And they'll hear that and they'll analyze that ad. And they'll either say, that's a good point, or they'll say, yeah, that's bullshit, right? And when they look at Raphael Warnock, I think he's a, he's a community pastor. He's somebody who's from a working class community. He's not some radical. He just cares about the working man. And they'll, be, and they'll try to put aside the things. But if, 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 they if the camera panned over to Warnock and he said, you know what? Fuck the cops. You know what? A cab, a cab, a cab. They'd probably be like, well, maybe she has a point, Kelly Loeffler. Wait a second here. And so I, I think well, no, when, when we talk, talk about these scenarios, like it is true that we shouldn't just like cave to Republican talking points and then abandon all our beliefs. Uh, that doesn't mean we need to lean into them and make them more effective. 
Well, it's it's just basically you have to run a series of like multiple strategies. Like I will admit, you can't just use one single strategy of radical argumentation. Like based on the arguments presented here, I I feel like that's a valid viewpoint in this instance. But there, you also have to admit there's also an instance where you need to use radical rhetoric. So that that's ultimately like I think the blending of those two positions is like an effective means. I think the problem I have with that take is that not all lefties are going to share that same idea. Some of them are just going to think that it's always okay to use that radical language. And if you ever use it, it's just going to reinforce that idea in their heads because they're not going to, they're not going to share the same grand strategy that you have. They're just going to always be using it and they're going to continue to do it. I'm an individual. I can make plenty of mistakes and you know, you have your own grand strategy. Well, I, I That's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying ideas, you're, I'm not saying you're part of some hive mind. I'm just saying that you have your like you have a strategy for when to use radical rhetoric and when to not use it. Not all lefties are going to share that, and the ones that don't and think it's always okay are going to be reinforced by you when the in the times that you use that radical rhetoric. Well, and that's well, dangerous. In that instance, you have to like collaborate together. The issue is like I will admit there's like some issue of like. Le- lack of like leftist unity in some instances and the reality is we have to like collectively work together and organize and come to like agreements where we work together and then put those movements and positions as a whole together i mean i can agree yeah, that there are a lot of good. you know tumblr yeah. kids out there who still believe in cancel culture uh, which sucks yeah. and they'll get super offended at anything that even resembles a slur but I think if we can continue to argue past that, then, you know, they'll get over it and they'll re- realize that the bigger issue is actual reform, not, you know, just edgy words. So I, I, I will say there actually there is a there is a place for more radical action. A lot of people don't see it like this, but at the time it was seen the bus boycotts was uh, and not the bus boycotts, but um, the action of like sit ins. So I'll see you later. Oh, thank you. See you later. Bye. The actions of like sit-ins and uh, the busing, uh, the, the like the bus campaign across the nation; those were all seen as extremely radical actions at the time. If you look at polling, like a lot of people thought it was like because they were breaking the rules of society, right? But and uh, again, Thoreau says in the same exact uh, essay from 1849, under a government which imprisons unjust uh, any unjustly, the true place for any just man is a prison. And by using that mentality to showing the the struggle of these sometimes more radical elements, you can. Sl- uh, strategically show the more sympathetic side of that movement and that's what eventually get garnered that movement that support those movements who did those sit-ins because they saw the reaction they got those black diners got with beatings and violence and all of that and and they was like oh my god i had no clue i didn't know of this violence i have was not unaware and slowly the tides turned and you could see that very same thing happening when uh like a, a year like during the george floyd protest where for years like the black lives matter movement and like taking the knee and all of that was disparaged for so long but like it was like a tipping point where if you look at polling data out of uh, you see it slowly go over to like 60 to 70 percent of the country were on board with the Black Lives Matter movement. Now, I know that th- that has dipped slightly since then, but you can see a lot of that was due to, I think, partially more radical uh, part. What we, what people at the time considered radical parts of the movement. Colin Kaepernick was considered a radical, someone who during the national anthem did an action, something that was supposed to represent the, the United States. It's, it's no really no different than the people who raised the fist at the Olympics and that was considered a radical action. The people listened to the details of how he switched it from sitting down to a knee to actually respect, pay respect to it. Of course not, because that nuance is lost in the messaging. But I think through 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 hard work, radical messaging can actually be strategically effective. And I think uh, the civil rights movement is a great example of that. Okay. Um, wait. Uh, hey, um, uh, Charmhole. What's up? Knock it off with the fucking emotes. Which which ones? Uh, the one with the uh, um, try hard and the the purple drink. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't it's, do a it. che- it's a cheer oh theme. Bro. I was literally cheer. I do it all the time. It's like hey, a cheer. Don't do that. Like, people, yeah, people look, interpret that as people. Ha- no, hey, 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 hey. Hey, yeah, I'm, people interpret try that. Hard just isn't as woke as charm hole. Okay, yeah, I really people I didn't think interpret I was... that that way. Um, so don't do it. All right, Great. I'll never do it here again. Okay. I promise. Okay, fair enough. Um, I think there's kind of a double standard though. Surely there's like people on the right who say like the most obscure, offensive bullshit, right? Uh, and and it doesn't happen the same way on the like, ACAB dealing. Like these aren't particularly offensive. 
things in particular. It's just that people seem to take them offensively. Well, I, I think a lot of first of all, okay, ACAB just, is absolutely can be taken offensively without you being unreasonable. Okay, it's not unreasonable to think that that's like a shitty phrase. I don't think you need to be no. crazy emotional about that. And secondly, more radical, I think, aspects of the right do end up hurting the right sometimes. For example, the Capitol riots. I'll do whatever I'm Prime asks because I respect Prime. Prime. But I'll, I'll admit that when he said cut it out with the emotes, I thought it was the one where I have the Haas gun shooting the chud with the pride paint coming up. So. I, that's that's where my mind went. I'm just curious, like, what does Chud mean? Um, Chud is basically uttered by people that are really mad that the only people that care about their opinions are people that are online. No, just yeah, but, 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 it's a lot it. smarter than that. So I was just curious. Chud is supposed just to duck, be duck, like a right wing person. Duck, duck, go, Chud. It stands for like cannibalistic human something something. I don't remember. Underground dweller. Yeah. It's a it's a really shitty canny movie from the eighties that Chapo Trap House coined. Or made popular, anyway. Oh, Vanguard, folks. They're coming, okay. <laughs> okay. I, I just want to note that we've had two people so far, I think, come to the position, or at least capitulate, I think, in uh, um, uh, Red Charlotte and uh, um, 40. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm wondering when Prime's going to do the same. Sorry, what? Jesus. Uh, but, sorry, I didn't, I didn't catch... Sorry, I didn't catch what you said. Oh. I'm busy. I just, I was... Engine minds. Oh, okay. I, I think we've, I think we've I changed minds on here tonight. I and, literally uh, have not had my mind changed. Oh, don't backtrack, Clear. Still say what you yeah. said. Don't backtrack. I, I, that, yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I said. I, I said. I said I think Red Charlotte and Wordy capitulated so far, and I'm wondering Red when Prime's going to do the same. Well, Red Charlotte was never on, on my side. What are you talking about? Wait. And yeah, War- Red Charlotte never yeah, capitulated. Yeah, she was, like, yeah. Kind of she was literally not on my side. Well, so well, so that's a failure. And I don't know if Wardy did either. Um, but I, 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 did. I, I wasn't paying attention. So maybe if he did, then that's fine. But I, I wasn't paying attention. Um, but I don't believe that he did at the end. Um, and yeah, my mind hasn't been changed on this either. I, I remain consistent that you use different rhetoric for different audiences. And that this this right here, wasting time worrying about like what some people uh, might say um, uh, within, a, within an extremely large movement, right? Like it, it gets you nowhere. It gets you nowhere, right? Um, rather how do you control, how do you control what rhetoric goes where? Exactly. Well, but wait, how, wait, are we about to do the whole thing over exactly. again? Are we about to do the whole thing over again? No, 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 we're not. We are not. <laughs> we're not. We're done with this. No, we're done with this. Don't worry. We've already, we've already hit it. Um, sorry, Dylan, you came really late into this. Uh, but no. I'm saying, how do you control those those people any which way? Those people seeing uh, like a cab, right? Can you actually shut them up? Destiny's going to try. He's going to try his damnedest, right? But can you? No, you actually cannot, right? Okay. So why why be, why are we worried about this? Like this doesn't make sense. It's like this endless crying over over these, right? And it's just to rally the troops, right? So look. So, Again, like it's. I mean, are, people are going to rape each other all the time. Why would you even bother to try to mitigate? Oh, that? Shit, no, are you serious? Did you oh, oh, okay. so See, see Destiny, this is your guy. See, Destiny, this is your guy. Um, yeah, yeah. you fucking embarrassed yourself. Um, no, seriously, <laughs> no, dude, you just fucking embarrassed yourself right there. I'm my own guy. No, yeah, I, I'm my own. Wait, 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 wait. Fuck. What did he say? Say it again. I couldn't hear everybody screaming. It was too offensive. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No. He was doing like a no laws meme. It was just, it was, it was not cool. I, I, I'll, Prime, I have a question. So like, I would, I, an example of this that I would use, if you have the idea, like of like, t- of like policing rhetoric would be, do you, I, I, this was really big at my high school. I don't know if you remember this. Do you remember back? I think it was like 2014, right? When the Black Lives Matter started the, um, the, the, when the Black Lives Matter, they, they cut off the highway and they, they shouted, um, I think it was what? pigs in a blanket fry them like bacon this was like a massive massive thing in, like in my high school at least right um that would be an example of something that was like it seems as if black lives matter pretty quickly came together as a movement it was like okay this can't happen again this is a optically unsalvageable argument and an example of like the abolish over over defund it seems like some of this stuff can happen kind of naturally but yeah i do think that trying to stimulate it you know forcefully can be difficult okay all right um <laughs> I think I think we've uh, crushed this topic. I don't. I'm guarantee whatever you're gonna say, uh, Red uh, Rage, is not gonna advance the topic, right? Remember to hit that like and subscribe, and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. I love you guys. River and a cappuccino, 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 cappucc